being thankful for what you do got. Let's get it to him, baby girl. Hey. Hey, he looks up, that ball is fair, and it's gone. It's a three-run double for Nick Lopez. Way back goes Ballou, looking up, it's gone! Right at the scoreboard, Nick Lopez! All right, welcome back to the Leisure Owl Show. I'm with my buddy, ex-teammate from USC, DeAndre Smith. Welcome, dude. Nicky Lowe. Nicky Lowe, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. So we're actually in the original Leisure House, and what we're creating is more than just a place. It's a people, a community of people that are you know, getting behind health and wellness, bringing a lifestyle to what baseball, uh, I think, needs to be, in my opinion. So um, I'm excited to have DeAndre in here. And he's a part of the Leisure House team. And we're doing some really big things, so I'm excited about that. Um, but, dude, how's everything been? What have you been up to, dude? Great, dude. Uh, just back home for the off season. Just yeah. working out over at Futures. I get to see you every day, so yeah. it's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kicking it every day, dude. Every day. I mean, Futures is one of the best places I've ever been to. Um, just like the facility itself is beautiful. You walk right in, you're like, this is big league. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. All the hit tracks, a sauna in there, yeah. the coaches, uh, the weight room. It's been great yeah. so far. I mean, you stay away from the cold tub though, but yeah, no, they got that in there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are looking for a place in the off season to train, I recommend futures out in Corona, great facility, great coaches, great people. Um, and it's just awesome to be surrounded around, uh, by a lot of, minor league guys professional guys and it's just a great environment in general great place great yeah. place to train for sure yeah. yeah so tell us a little bit about deandre smith like who is he how did you you know go through travel ball high school tell us a little bit about your background yeah um i mean obviously a smaller a smaller person so uh in the game of baseball i guess like I've always wanted to separate myself like I, I had to, right? I, mm -hmm. I wasn't as strong or as fast as a lot of guys uh, kind of coming up. So um, I just saw, like, how can I separate myself and, like, what, what work ethic can I build to give myself a, an opportunity to keep playing? Because, you know, I, like, I love the game, and I knew I did at a young age, but yeah. how was I going to be able to continue to move, to move up levels and continue to um, just – you know, make a difference not only for my career, but just like in, in my game in general. Yeah. Um, so I think like from a really young age, probably around like the middle school is when like I just decided to work hard, you know, to yeah. dedicate yeah. my life to, to baseball. And I mean, you get it, you know how, how hard you have to work to mm -hmm. really uh, continue to like pass guys up because that's what it, it all comes down to. And yeah. like, I, I remember my high school coach always saying this, but he, he says – uh uh, the game of baseball has a way of weeding guys out. Yeah. It's just like, like it makes sense. You yeah. know what I mean? Like <laughs> you see, you see guys get passed up all the time. Oh, and, absolutely. Um, I guess the fear of that is like what keeps you, keeps me going. And, um, but yeah, I mean, travel ball, like played for SGV Arsenal, mm -hmm. um, pretty local, uh, went to San Dimas high school and then met up with you at SC. Yeah. My second year. That was sick. Yeah. Yeah. I actually <laughs> remember a story you told me in eighth grade. I think this is when you really took off as a player and like, tell us a little bit about like, you know, what you were going through in eighth grade and before that and how you really knew that you were going to be a ball player. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just something I always did at like a young age. Like I always had a ball or always had a bat in my hand. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. so in eighth grade, I did eighth grade twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog. Yeah. You got, I mean, I, had to I get feel the like that's pretty common guys. nowadays. Like a, sure, a lot yeah. of guys are repeating just so they can um, have that age factor, right? right? So right. you can get drafted as a sophomore, which exactly. is smart if you're dedicated to your craft. So yeah. I agree with that. That's awesome. Yeah. So like um, around eighth grade, kind of knew I needed to make some some changes, I guess. Yeah. So I was like always on the heavier side. A uh, little, a little chubby yeah, guy. Heavier, dude. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now he's all bulked up. Uh, trying, yeah. but so I was a little chubby. And, um, then, like in, in eighth grade, I I broke my foot. My first eighth grade year, I broke mm -hmm. my foot, and just wasn't wasn't feeling the whole getting around school on crutches thing. So I 
I did a little bit of homeschooling in, uh, for about a month. And, dude, I was just eating all day. Just yeah. <laughs> couldn't do anything, broken <laughs> foot, just eating. And I just I, – I packed on the pounds, right? Yeah. And uh, I went back to school, and I was like, dang, dude, like I feel passed up by a lot of people. School and, and baseball, like I just wasn't – I wasn't clicking and I was, it just wasn't happening for me. So made the, made the decision right there. Like I'm going to go to the gym every morning before school. And, uh, obviously before I was driving. So my yeah. mom would wake up with me and take me to the gym every morning before school. And I would, uh, the, the gym was down the street from my middle school. So I was able to, uh, lift there in the mornings and then walk over to, to school which was brutal but yeah oh my gosh um, but no I fell in love with the process and fell in love with like the routine and just holding myself accountable of waking up at five in the morning and yeah. going to the gym and uh, obviously like you, you put in enough work you start to see the results and then you know you see a few of the results and you're like oh man I'm, tr- I'm kind of looking a little different <laughs> now so yeah. then that gives you even more you know yeah. drive to to keep going after what you want so yeah I had made that change right then and there and then like that work ethic at such a young age at 13 however when you are in eighth grade you yeah. know just kind of built a foundation for me of like what a process and routine and discipline looks like yeah so you would say that the biggest thing when you decided to really make a change was discipline not motivation right for sure yeah yeah, yeah. and we talk about that all the time yeah, we talk yeah. about discipline uh Time's not pleasure. motivation <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I think the discipline thing is like what separates guys. Like, I feel like everybody can get motivated for a certain amount of time. Uh, Motivation is key. Like you need motivation to do what you want to do, you know, but you have to have the discipline to complete those things. Right. Right. Like you got to have the discipline to wake up at 5 a.m. and have your mom take you to 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 the gym and then go to school on top of that and then walk home after that and that eighth grade that's pretty impressive like, yeah. i don't know many eighth graders doing that you know what i mean so um discipline is i think the key separator would you agree for sure yeah yeah i know like going back to what we were talking about like we say discipline uh not motivated yeah but yeah. uh like you said motivation is the first part i guess but yeah. what happens when you wake up on day two not motivated what do yeah. you do you yeah. know what i mean you gotta be disciplined you're not gonna have the motivation every single day to wake up and stick to your routines and stick to your process of what gets you better. Like yeah. what gets you better might not get me better. So, yeah. uh, it's, it's all individual and you know, what gets you better. Um, but yeah, I mean like just that whole schedule and like whole process that I went through at such a young age, kind of, uh, set up the, like the rest of, of my life and like kind of the, the rest of the way I want to go about things and in yeah. baseball and relationships and friendships, just, you know, being able to fully apply yourself no matter what you're going through that day, no matter what feelings, emotions, if you're tired, if you're asleep, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, at the end of the day, you got to show up. It's just what you do. Yeah, it's what, what you do. That's the standard, the standard right? Yeah. The standard of like, all right, this is what I do. It's exactly. not because I'm motivated to do it. Right. Uh, it's just because that's just what I do. Right. Um, and I think that's a lot of people miss that because they're like, oh, I'm not motivated. Like, you know, this, the motivation's gone. The the videos that got me motivated to do it. It's like, it's not showing up every single day. Exactly. And to be disciplined enough to just be like, all right, even though I'm having a terrible day today, I'm still going to do what I do. Right. Because that's the standard. Exactly. Right. And so like the standard, um, that became a big thing in my, my life at Kentucky. Our coach preached the standard. It was like, we would have hitting rounds and, you know, the standard would be, 95 backside in a certain round and if you got 94.7 it's like that's not the standard you know it's like and guys at kentucky will agree with me it's just it's awesome that that our coach kept us at a high standard and so i mean i apply that to my own life now like this is the standard and i think leisure house is going to be you know built off that because the standard is the standard whatever it is like even if you miss below the standard even though it could be close it's not the standard, right? right? So you're we're at Leisure House, we're trying to elevate the standards of baseball and in your life. And I think that's so important to be able to move forward in your life and get to the things that you want to get. So um yeah, so based off that, dude, you talked about your discipline in eighth grade. So how did that carry into the high school? And you know, you told me you started on varsity as a freshman. How was that like? I know a lot of guys don't get to 
experience that, but there is guys that have, and maybe are struggling with, you know, fitting in or not being able to speak up. Like what, what kind of advice would you give to them based on your experience? Yeah. I mean, coming in as a freshman, it's obviously tough. And especially around that age, um, <clears throat> compared to college, like you go in and you know, you're 18, 19 years old, you know how to hold your own a little bit more, but, mm -hmm. um, I mean, but there's guys in that clubhouse who, you know, nowadays uh, with after COVID and everything, there's guys who are in their fifth and sixth year who are way older than, yeah. you know, being an 18 year old mm -hmm. freshman. Right. So um, but for me, just at coming in at 14, um, I just wanted like a, a chance to to play and a, and a chance to be out there every day. And um, I guess the way I handled it was. I've always wanted to be extremely coachable, right? And mm -hmm. like always wanted to just be a sponge and soak up as much of the game as possible. And uh, I went to San Dimas and my two coaches, uh, Mike Regan and Mark Chiapelli, um, were teachers of the game, you know? Like I got introduced in high school to classroom days where we're going over bump plays and first and thirds and picks and relays and things like that. It's such a young age where, you know, when you got to college, and you know you have those yeah. classroom days and you're oh, man. those are grinder you know because <laughs> you just you're fresh off of your lecture your yeah, tutor yeah. then you know you're, you're, you're back in the classroom again. yeah and like, dang doing first and thirds and bump yeah. plays and stuff but i mean we were in the classroom today at futures oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're still in the classroom it yeah. doesn't matter you're 14 years old or 24 23 you still find a way to get in the classroom and, and so yeah for sure so yeah i, I mean i think like just at that age, if you have a, and even if you're on the freshman or, or JV team, you know, what I mean, just like being able to soak up as much as you can and be as coachable as you can, because at the end of the day, like, hey, you throw it against a wall. If it sticks, you know, it, it sticks and that's your yeah. thing. But if it doesn't, what do you lose? You know? Yeah. Okay. Now you just gain information and uh, you might be able to use it for a, a later time in your career yeah. or in your life. And um, I think for me, it was like, coming in and, and finding where I fit in. And, uh, I mean, I think half the battle at that age is like just being quiet. You don't know everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and just soaking up as much as you can from coaches, from older players and asking questions and putting yourself out there to ultimately like grow your game. It's your mm -hmm. career. You know, like my, my dad always says like, a closed mouth doesn't get fed. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, you got to put yourself out there. You got to talk to, coaches to players ex-players who went there who like have gone through yeah. everything you're going through and um you know I've been really lucky throughout like my career my freshman year um senior shortstop Joseph Bonna took me under his wing and like you know really looked out for me and then kind of like when he left passed the reins to me you know I started yeah. playing I was playing third base as a freshman yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> and then like when he left I was able to play short for the next three years and yeah uh, but if it wasn't for him, you know, I would have who knows what that would have looked like for me or if he didn't take me under his wing. And, you know, he's a really, really good player and a really, really great dude off the field, too. So I had like a really, really great influence um, at all on on all cylinders, you know, like yeah. on, on the field, off the field, in the classroom, just hanging out with the with the guys like he showed me how to interact with people and how to um, just go about things the right way. And when you do things the right way it tends to work out for you, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, if you're one of those guys, just find where you fit in <laughs> yeah, and learn. That's yeah. a, that's, You just got to keep evolving, keep yeah. learning. The game changes every single day. There's something new every single day. So mm -hmm. how can I soak it up and, and uh, have the adjustability to come out tomorrow and what, everything I just learned, apply it and yeah. be able to master that, you know what I mean? So no, I agree, dude. I mean – being able to have somebody to take you under your wing is so oh, yeah. important, dude. And I, I wouldn't be where I am today myself without having, you know, mentors like that. And they come like they, that only happens when you're putting yourself out there and like confident in yourself and what your game is. Like you can't like, just expect people to just like want to help you if you're just right. not, like you said, closed mouth, don't get fed. Yeah. Right. And so seeking help and seeking just like people to guide you is so important. And especially as a freshman, that's going to be, everybody probably knew you're going to be the starting shortstop the next year. Right. So, um, having somebody, you know, take the time out of their day, like nobody has to, no one owed you anything. Right. right? Yeah. And the fact that he,
decided to take you under his wing was huge and i think it's super important so um yeah so when you started as a shortstop as a sophomore like what changed what what was the team dynamic like how did you start knowing that okay i'm gonna be a college baseball player right um that summer going into or maybe fall i'm not too a long time ago not too sure but i committed to uc riverside like my (laughs) sophomore year um and i mean like at, at the time i was all in on uc riverside right and uh was super thankful for the for the offer and was like you know eager to, to get out there yeah. committing as a sophomore really yeah. early got my instagram post out there yeah <laughs> um but no it, it was it was it was awesome i came in and like really was on top of of trying to become the best player i could be and like off the field just really really started to elevate uh because of what i was doing off the field and like my process and my routine and the things that i kept as the standard of like what I needed to do to separate myself from a lot of guys right so um the like lifting every day the hitting after practice every day the hitting on my own and you know um what was the standard for you like as a sophomore just to give the the guys an idea of like what it is like to be a committed player you know going through high school right so I mean you you always like you always hear hey once you commit like now the real work starts right yeah but I think it's true, you know, like you, you don't want to be the guy that commits and then takes uh, his foot off the off the gas and yeah. uh, kind of fizzle out. Like we all know a lot oh, of those yeah. guys that fizzle out before mm-hmm. they even step on a college campus. Right. Yep. So for me, I didn't I didn't want to be that guy. And I wanted to just keep getting better every single year. Right. And um, for, like my process looked like still waking up before school to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, in. I look back at it because like the my training is so much different than it was back then and like I I used to just do things to do them you know (laughs) I would just go to the gym and lift like a bodybuilder in the morning just because and then yeah have a lift at school and then a practice and then come home and go hit again and maybe go to the gym again and like yeah um it's also a a lot of the guys I surrounded myself with too kind of had that same uh discipline so I had a group a strong group group of guys who wanted to also like get better and and uh separate themselves and elevate their game so um having that group with me was it made life easier you know I mean it's it would have been a lot harder I think to kind of hold myself accountable and stay as disciplined as I was if I didn't have a group of guys that like every single night hey we're hitting at nine o'clock and and the cages at the high school or we're meeting up in wherever to go hit right and and we always had something like that which was really really cool but um yeah I think for my whole high school career I kind of just stuck to that of like I'm gonna outwork everyone I'm gonna just stay in the weight room I'm gonna stay on top of my nutrition I'm gonna eat well um and I and I kind of saw like just a body transformation start to happen yeah and looking back it probably wasn't the greatest (laughs) yeah because I was doing a bunch of like bodybuilding lifts and stuff but Um, but I think just like becoming physical and, and putting on the weight and putting on the muscle definitely separated my started, I started to run faster, started mm-hmm. to hit the ball harder, um, started to throw the ball harder. And just, you know, when you see those things happening, you know, you, you feel good. And I think it was easy for me in high school, uh, to go and step out on the field every day and say I was the best player out there because I genuinely think that I put the work in and had the confidence to believe that I was. And yeah. even if I wasn't, you can tell me, like I yeah. can tell me different because in my mind, I'd already put in the work yeah. to, uh, to get there. So, yeah. So yeah. would you say like the mindset, like of being confident in what work you're putting in made a huge difference? For sure. For sure. Even if the, even if like the work I was doing, obviously it wasn't, the most efficient or it wasn't the best thing I could have been doing for my yeah. body or career at the time. But you know, that's what I knew back then. So, yeah. um, I was going to put all of my eggs into whatever that routine and process looked like. Yeah. And at the moment it was getting me better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously once you venture out and you start to, to learn more and get educated about, you know, the way the body works and moves and especially in baseball, yeah. uh, it's going to change your routine. You know what I mean? Is, is going to, look different year to year or even month to month it, it could look different and it's, it's about 
staying true to it, but also being open minded to change a few things when someone's telling you yeah. something that could benefit you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I feel like a lot of players um, in general, like they aren't open to listening to other people. For and sure. I think that's a big issue only because, OK, I get it. Like you have your routine. This is what you do. But where you grow as a player is by opening your mind to what other people are telling you because they've been there before. Even like if they said 30 things to you and only one thing was actually legit, that one thing could help change your career. Right. Right. So being open to just like understanding how people are trying to help you and like pick from their brain. Okay, I like what he said, but also like what he said. I like what he said, but I also didn't like what he said. And you just add to your playbook. Oh, yeah. You're adding to who you are as a player yeah. and you're just making yourself better and better and better. And I don't think you get better if you just like aren't open to other people because so many people have gone through certain ways of life and college. They have different experiences. Mm-hmm. And some of those things you will probably never experience, but the, they told you like how this is, that might click for you, right? right. Yeah. So I think being open to coaches even if you think they're the worst coach ever they could have like that one thing that could just like change your career of course with a yeah. snap of a finger so <clears throat> i agree um definitely be open guys yeah. don't be <laughs> open to what your coach is saying you know they're not all right but they do have experience that you don't have so right. be uh be open so um after you you know what you were committed at uc riverside like how did usc come about how did that how did that happen um, so the head coach at UC Riverside, uh, he, he left and, um, and the recruiter, uh, who recruited me to UC Riverside also left. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he left <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the recruiter left and the coach stayed. I don't know, yeah. but something happened and, yeah. uh, we'll have to edit that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving that in there. That's hilarious. That's okay. funny. Um, so, and, and also I kind of like that summer just, I ha- I had a good year. I want to say like hit like 400 or maybe I didn't hit 400, but hit somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, first team all CIF, like That's whatever good. conference we were in MVP. Yeah. And then I go hit the summer circuit and like, yeah, had a pretty good summer circuit and, uh, just with the coaches leaving and everything, like. Uh, I just wanted to see what else was out there, right? Yeah. So I decommit, and like a week later, I'm at. Uh, I think we're, uh, maybe not a week later actually, but um, it was football season, so it's sometime in the fall. Yeah. <clears throat> and I get a call from Coach Alvarez. Yeah. And uh, wanted me to go on a, on a visit up there, so me and my dad went to SC, and I mean, I soon as soon as you step on the campus, it's hard not to fall in love with the campus. You know what I mean? Like that place sells itself. Yeah. Um, and the degree as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they took me to the McKay center. Yeah. That's big league. The McKay. Dude, Dude, the McKay. John McKay. dude. Lots of memories. Yeah. Little Galen. (laughs) Little little G. G. Oh man. It's like, yeah, we get, you get all this for free. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, great, great times in little G. We can talk about those later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I go on the official, or not the official, but the visit, and I'm like, tell my dad as soon as we got in the car, I like, I'm going to school here. I don't, yeah. I don't want to see anywhere else. I'm going to school here. Yeah. Call Gabe. The next day, hey, yeah, uh, like I, I want to be a Trojan. Yeah. <laughs> Fight on. Fight on. Yeah, it was a done deal after that. Um. But like, the, like I said, that summer, I like hit all of the, uh, like showcases, and I actually didn't make the area code team my mm-hmm. underclass year. Um, and it's funny enough, I wasn't committed there yet, but the tryouts were at USC. No way. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So that, that part was pretty cool. Um, before you continue, um, how important would you say showcases are and the area code stuff? I mean, it, like you hear it all the time, like if you're good, they're going to find you. Right. And I don't think that it's like a huge necessity to being able to play at the next level or yeah. get drafted or, or those sorts of things, but it definitely does help, right? Like you want to be able to put yourself out there in front of as many people as possible. So I, agree. Um, I wouldn't say that it's end all be all if you aren't in those things, but it def- it definitely does help you and your chances of just being seen. Yeah. Um, but like word spreads of, of 
you know, who's that guy and who's not. So mm-hmm. it's going to get out there eventually if you can yeah. play or not. Yeah. But I don't think it's end-all, be-all for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I've had a lot of um, high school dads, moms ask me, like, hey, like, I got invited to the showcase. Like, what do you think? Or there is a showcase. Should I go to it? Right. And I'm like, it's an experience, man. Like you have to just look at it like that. It's not like, okay, I'm going to go to this and I'm going to get committed or I'm not good enough to play college baseball. Right. You get to meet guys. Like I, I've ran into guys at showcases that I've ran into recently and just be like, dude, we played at the showcase yeah. together. Like what's up? Yeah. And so I think it's just like an experience that you get to go and like, okay, this is what the college level is like. This is what college field looks like. This is what a college workout kind of looks like. And you're surrounded by guys that are also trying to be where you're at. Right. So, you know, you kind of have an idea of like, all right, I need to keep going or I need to, you know, take it back a, a step. All right. right. So, see where you match up. See yeah, what, exactly. See what other guys look like. And yeah. You look like you're holding your own or not. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I think definitely not end all be all. So, if you guys are looking to go to showcases, like, it's an experience. Have fun out there. Definitely. Meet as many people as you can. Be super cool with the coaches. Like, you know, opportunities are going to present themselves. So for sure, um, if you don't end up getting ever invited to showcases, I was never a showcase guy. I never did well in showcases. I I'm just a, a ball player, I guess. So <laughs> whenever I got the opportunity to play, that's when I knew that this is what I need to do: get right. on base and whatever. Yeah. So um, you're yeah. a junkyard dog. I was a junkyard <laughs> dog, bro. <laughs> Shout out Sergio Brown, junkyard dog. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Um, so yeah, you can continue with the whole story yeah so um i mean i i guess in like my junior year um had a had another good year and kind of same thing first team i'm actually i don't know maybe i was Dog. i think yeah, i was probably mvp, MVP of the league or whatever um and then that summer was like crucial like that summer pretty much uh changed like the course of of what was going on for me um made the area code team and had a really good week there and went to uh I did a few different things with uh MLB develops with the breakthrough series I, I played in the WWBA with the uh, uh breakthrough team so yeah. that was amazing and met a lot of really really talented and and just good good guys on that on that team and the coaching staff um so that helped out a bunch and I, I did a bunch of the the showcase like the I did the perfect game national uh, showcase and that was fun I, I met some guys and um, like you were saying earlier just like the networking and how small the baseball community really is yeah like there's guys who I was on the same team with on that perfect game showcase who I'm playing against in pro ball and it's like oh yeah. man you remember we were on the red team dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> we were on the red team I, I still follow you yeah right? you know like yeah. stuff like that where you just run you know your your paths cross again and it's cool to see um, you know we're 23 and 24 years old and i knew this kid for a week when we were 17 and yeah <laughs> playing yeah. in some random place you know what i mean yeah and, like now this kid playing pro ball and yeah. so that part's really really uh dope but um yeah so like that like th- that junior year kind of really you you saw all the work pay off um because I, I had a really good summer and had a really good junior year and then senior year can can't really do much about about that uh i want to say in the fall like january ish i got hit in the face (laughs) with the yeah with the fastball yeah broken jaw had uh had surgery um so i I had surgery i want to say on like a monday or something and i end up playing again uh, seven days later, a week oh later gosh. after surgery, I had the mouthpiece, the whole face mask, yeah. everything going. That's what a dog looks like right there. Dude, you get hit in the jaw, broken jaw, and you're back at it. That's, that's different dog. That's I mean, awesome. Probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you're a ball player, dude. You a need junk to get out dog. there. Junk your dog. dog, dude. <laughs> but, um, you know, dude, that was like one of the saddest days, uh, was not suiting up for, uh, opening day yeah. senior year. I remember just like being in shorts in my jersey just I didn't even want to go to the game that day dude yeah I was I was crying just begging my dad to let me play yeah it was like two days off of surgery yeah <laughs> <laughs> like come on dad please yeah but I need to be out there yeah I mean he said wait a week 
<laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah, I waited the week, but um, I think my senior year I got I played three games before COVID hit and yeah. banged everything. So yeah, let's dive into what COVID was like for you and how that shaped you into the player you are today. Oh man, I mean, I had a lot of fun and like what leisure, right? Where we work hard and and play hard also. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like what my days look like. You know what I mean? Um, I just found a way to really keep working and was really blessed that uh one of my best friends had like a uh, home gym and we yeah. kind of it was cool it was a, our little project that we uh did together uh me and my two of my best friends we <clears throat> sort of built a gym in his garage That's like sick. bought a, a rack and different weights and uh just like different equipment in there and, and yeah. built it all and yeah uh, saw it come to life after a few weeks and that's awesome uh our fitness journey and just like working hard uh really 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 like elevated to the next level once that gym got built and, like i'm saying like and like i said going looking back probably wasn't the greatest thing ever but yeah we were lifting like three times a day dude yeah. just <laughs> my gosh just, well what else can you do yeah right? exactly like it'd be 10 o'clock at night and we had a group chat and they'd send a text like let's get a lift in and yeah. we just meet up at his house, get a lift that's in sick. and hang out, talk. Um, so that's what those days looked like during COVID. And then, uh, obviously my freshman year of college, I didn't move in on campus until December. Mm-hmm. Um, and right when I got there, I want to say it was like the first inner squad, uh, Tyrese, Tyrese, <laughs> Tyrese, <laughs> Tyrese up, dude, my, my dog, uh, I'm I'm at first base or I I took a bad swing and I just felt like my back just go and I'm like oh man dude, yeah. here we go right it's like my first inner squad but so I end up like later in the at bat I think I walk or, or something I get on first base and I'm just like dude Tyrese like just please don't make me run right now right yeah dude hits a ball off the wall no <laughs> so I'm like truck in the third right and as soon as I get to third base uh, I just kind of feel go and kind of just stepped off to the side and uh had an l4 and l5 stress fracture oh. and i want to say like herniated disc somewhere in there yeah so got the mris and everything and uh was looking like i was gonna miss most of the year which i did and uh i remember coming back a few months late like it happened in december i think i played my first game in april around april yeah. so um Missed the first two months of the year. And it was weird. It was a weird transition of, like, hey, I got a chance to play as a freshman. Yeah. I don't know where, second or short, maybe even third, but, like, I got a real shot to play. Yeah. Um, To, like, I mean, I'm not even on the field. I'm in shorts every single day. Yeah. Freezing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Standing out Dug there. Dug out jacket. You're yeah. Like, oh, man. So then I, I remember, like, so Gilly – um taking me through through walkthroughs on bump plays and first and thirds and stuff like that and um like i'm, I'm freezing it's cold <laughs> i'm not in pants i'm not in anything and um i remember uh there was one night where it, it had rained or something and yeah um you get a kick back dude oh, yeah, dude. all right get leisure <laughs> get leisure dude come on get leisure so yeah um i remember going through that and and just being like okay, this is a, a really, really crappy situation, right? But how can I make the most out of it, yeah. right? How can I learn from this? How can I uh, apply myself in during walkthroughs? Everyone else is full speed. I'm walked through. Yeah. I've got two stress fractures and a herniated disc or something, something like that. Yeah. So how can I apply myself to uh, learn and, and ultimately when it's my time to be in there, you know, be ready to go yeah so um i remember i remember like after the rehab and everything not really being too sure what the next steps were going to look like and uh, it was a friday i just got cleared that thursday night so it was a friday and we're playing against dixie state (laughs) dixie state dixie state i think i think it was dixie state (laughs) some state school yeah some (laughs) dixie state right so uh and we're you know like when you get there you go you sit down and uh go through your stretch and everything and so we get on the field 
and um, Gilly, he he would always, you remember, he'd always make his little walk through the line and yep. say what's up to everyone. Yeah. And he gets to me, and, he, and he's like, he's like, you want to hit ninth or leadoff? And he's like, ah, oh, you're probably too scared for leadoff. Like, you're going to hit ninth, right? <laughs> That's such I was a like, Gilly comment. I was like, no, dude, I want to hit leadoff, right? Yeah. Dude, it was wild seeing my name, like, playing second leading yeah. off, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, crap, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like here. It's it's yeah. now like first college game. Like I've been waiting, been rehabbing this for eight, ten weeks, like eight to ten weeks, just really yeah. trying to get back to this point. And um, no fans, which probably helped me out a lot. Yeah, helped me cool the nerves. Felt like an inner squatter. Is this a home game? It's a home game. Yeah. yeah. So kind of felt like an inner squatter. You know, yeah. uh, no fans. It's tough to get up for yeah for one of those games. So, um. We play the top half, and then, you know, we're playing the bottom half, and I'm leading off, and I'm like, yeah. dude, here we, here we go, right? Here we go. <laughs> uh, first at bat, single. Yeah. Got that just one out like of the that. way, dude. Just, like, crazy feeling. Like, man, I just got my first college hit at USC. Yeah. Like, what the heck? Like, yeah. This is wild, right? Um, and we end up hitting a – so I still second. Got my first stolen bag out of the way. We end yeah. up hitting a round, and – I single again and drive in a run this time. So, uh, and in the same inning, I end up stealing second again. So, first college inning, I've got two hits, an RBI, and two bags. And I'm like, league. dude, what a what, day. Uh, what am I doing have here? I should have signed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where my check at, dog? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't think I got another hit the rest of the game. But <laughs> <laughs> That's a day, though. Dude. No, dude, was it, it was, it was one sick. For three? Um, Two for two for four, maybe? Two for three with a yeah. – I think I walked. Right, two bro. for three with a walk. All right, bro. Two bags, yeah. <laughs> That's a Sorry day, about bro. it. Right. 500 on the year. Um, I think I, I played Saturday and then Sunday since I was still rehabbing. I uh, didn't – I didn't start, but I ended up coming in in like the eighth or ninth, like a defensive replacement or something. Yeah. Played second. Um, and then after that, I played every weekend. Um. And that was and that was a wild experience, like traveling for the first time, uh, like flying somewhere with the team for the first time. You don't you don't really yeah. do that in high school. Yeah, you know? like That's I had sick. flown to like different tournaments and showcases yeah. and stuff. But uh, like, touch a little bit more on like <clears throat> what like a a travel day looked like as um, a freshman. Yeah, I mean, and it was really different compared to sophomore year because of the COVID regulations and yeah. guidelines and stuff. So. You know, masked up, dude. Every <laughs> masked up. We, we have the, on you guys. Oh man, honest. <laughs> Pauly, shout out, Polly D. Polly D, <laughs> baby, come on. Um, but yeah, no, he was he was honest. Um, we had to have like the regular blue mask, and then we had like this face shield also. Oh my gosh. So, dude, we were. I mean, it was brutal. Nothing was getting in there, dude. dude. Nothing, right? <laughs> nothing was getting in there. Say no to COVID. Yeah, dude. Say <laughs> that's, no to COVID. That's what we were on. That's awesome. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, so you leave on Thursday, Thursday morning, probably really early in the morning. Yeah. And, you know, you got to get your, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but you, you got to get your emails out to your teachers saying, or professors that you're not yeah. going to be in class. Oh, because you guys are online, so yeah. you had to send the emails. So we yeah, had to yeah. send the emails for Thursday and Friday excusing our absence. And yeah, and Monday too. <laughs> 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 no, we went to class. <laughs> they made sure we did. <laughs> we went to class in every tutor, or else you were you were banged. Yeah, you were done if yeah. you missed tutor. Yeah, class you might be able to get away with, but if you're lucky, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but tutor, there's no, there's there was no, no escape in tutor. Literally not. You didn't, you don't want to get the text message from from Jeanette no, talking about dude. come come oh, see me. Man, that was brutal. I got some of those. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had me a learning specialist too, dude. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> if you had a learning specialist, yeah, you're just you're different, dude. <laughs> no, no, no comment. No comment. You know why? If you're at SC as an athlete, you don't want a learning specialist. Although they are great. I love. I mean, I love my learning specialist, but it's just like. It's just like, ah, it's just another thing you got to worry about. But. There's a bad connotation for no reason. Yeah. You know, it helped you learn. So yeah, it did. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh the the lecture and tutor wasn't enough. You yeah. Know? <laughs> <laughs> one, more, one more person to help me. That's oh, awesome. Man. Um, 
But yeah, like going to Arizona for the first time, like playing against U of A was like that's sick. That was wild, yeah. right? At U of A. At U of A, yeah. I was a freshman and like dude, that was the first time I'd like really been chirped at before and I'm like, Oh man, that's kinda kinda scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a whole forty guy forty band roster chirping at dude. you. And and like they weren't really on COVID guidelines at that point, so yeah. they were almost sold out and first like big crowd I'd played in, in front of and I'm like damn <laughs> like this oh, is <laughs> so you had the 40 man roster and the fans chirping at you dude I mean probably about four different frats out there just and and there's some stories I've they, heard about this that we can't tap into yeah, yeah, just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's and that's what college is is like those stories that you know that you'll have for a lifetime which yeah. I'm super thankful for uh, you you have a relationship with your high school buddies, but then you have a different type of relationship with the guys college, you went to college yeah, with. Absolutely. And I'm just super <clears throat> thankful that I got the chance to play baseball in college. And like, I don't know if obviously I'm I'm very I have a biased opinion, but like if I can tell someone to sign or go to school, like, dude, school is one of those things where college is one of those things, especially at a power five like usc like yeah a local kid too like that's yeah. a hard that's op- the dream to go dude right? that's usc is the dream to go to as a california native southern california at least yeah <laughs> 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 it's a hard place to say no to yeah um and if you have like the the belief in yourself that like hey signing is like some guys only get one chance right and yeah um so i guess it depends on how much you're willing to bank on yourself and bet on yourself to see like, you know what? I had an opportunity one time. I'll get, it'll, another, I'll one. get another one, but it doesn't happen like that for, yeah. for everyone. So I was super blessed to have that happen to me, but I would tell kids to go to school just because like things like this, right? Like yeah. if I sign out of high school, we don't hang out. We yeah. don't even know each other. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of other guys that you played with in exactly Juco or yeah, in in uh chicago or at yeah kentucky you yeah, know what i mean like you, 10 different you, places i went to dude, <laughs> <laughs> you've been able to venture out and network with so many people who yeah. will be in your life for the for the rest of your life you know yeah. what i mean and and it's like it's wild that baseball was the reason why you know exactly. what I mean? it's crazy you say that because like i mentioned scott oda the other day oh yeah yeah and like you played with him yeah. with the mets and like i played with him or i didn't play with him but he was my um what's it called um host for mm-hmm. my my visit mm-hmm. and so it's crazy how like when i went on my visit there i never thought i would be meeting some dude named deandre and then right. he would know him in yeah. five years yeah it's wild. so it's like it's wild how things work out like that and nowadays with the nil stuff too it's like okay like if i do go to the college route you still can get paid, dude, you can get you it back I mean? yeah. you know what <laughs> I mean? so it's like i I understand, like, okay, I want to get drafted. I want to play professional baseball. But there's a different experience of going to college. You get to grow as a person. Um, you get to meet new people. You get to network, especially if you're going to USC. Like, Man. USC is just a ton of networking in mm-hmm. itself, just, like, having that degree. Like, people, like, talk to me and you'd be like, oh, you went to USC? And, like, automatically just, like, yeah. click. And I'm right. just like, I mean, I was a jabroni, but, like, <laughs> yeah, I did. I made it out of there. <laughs> somehow made it out of there but like jabroni yeah crazy. so <laughs> it's like it's crazy how like just having some kind of degree that like people value so much and right. i value it a lot too but like some people value it more like oh like he went to usc he, he's he's right. like legit you know yeah. what i mean so yeah i mean aside from that like just having that college experience and like having fun and like knowing how to leisure you know have the discipline but like pleasure as well right you got to find the balance of it because if you don't there's a lot of people i know that didn't find the balance right. or you know yeah cared too much about baseball and they had no social life right. or no friends you know or the opposite or the opposite yeah. you know like yeah. had too much social life and no <laughs> baseball you know so it can go both ways so i think the balance is so important um learning at a, lo- a young age because it can really set you up for success because you need to be able to be social and network with people because as we're finding out, it's super important. Like the people we met in college are like helping us out with what we're trying to do. Exactly. And I think like, I get it. Like you want to go all in on baseball, but like baseball isn't going to be there for the rest of your life. And when it's over, like, all right, what what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Right. 
So like you said, like we were talking, like it's just college is not a bad route. Right. If you're, especially nowadays, dude, like <laughs> they get paid now and they <laughs> yeah. get, they get full scholarships. Right. And stuff. Yeah. Like, come I on. got pit vipers. Those yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got pit vipers and student debt. <laughs> yeah. To student debt, dude. Like, come on. So, um, those of you that are kind of looking, you know, getting drafted or go to the college route, I think it's important to kind of look at all the possibilities that could happen, what you can get out of it. If you are going to college with no, like just an intent of just getting drafted, like just don't look at it like that. There's so many opportunities that you can have just by going and meeting people and being cool with the coaches and the coaches liking you. And like a great example is Matt McLean. He was drafted what 25th overall in out of high school. And he took a bet, a bet on himself Mm -hmm. and he went to UCLA and he had a terrible freshman year, but balled out sophomore and junior year. He was the fifth overall pick. So, I mean, that, I mean, there was no NIL involved back then. And for a guy to be able to be go like, okay, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to do this much better just shows how much confidence like that, that he had. And I think that's so important, like, especially for players nowadays, like take a chance on yourself. Right. You have to. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're the poster child for taking a chance on, <laughs> yeah. on himself. I, I didn't have any uh, million dollar deals, on, you know, presented to me, but I, I had to take a chance on myself if I wanted to pursue the college route, and it's paid off. You know, I yeah, I still like still preach that like take a chance on yourself because you never know. Like it's your life. Like this is your life. Right. You can decide whether whatever you want to do with it, and whatever route you decide to do, just like go all in. You can't 100%. just be like, uh, you know, I'm right. going to go to college, whatever, or I'm going to go professional baseball, but like, I don't really right. know what to do. So, yeah. And I think if you're a, if you're a kid that, you know, you get an opportunity to sign out of high school when you go to school, you know, school is not end all be all right. Yeah. That's your, that's a, that's a point for you to pit stop, go get some gas, fill up, grab a snack I like that. right before you get back on the road and you got a long drive like some guys get lost on that Mm -hmm. pit stop right and yeah never fill up Mm -hmm. maybe i forgot a snack or or something right (laughs) but um starving dude what do i do yeah but i i think like hey if you're a kid and you have an opportunity to sign and you go to school right like you got to plan out what you want your life to look like and what it takes to get to that point right yeah so yeah like i knew and I wish I would have went about it a lot different. Mm-hmm. Obviously, after like living and learning and and just knowing how to carry myself now, yeah. like I look back when I'm on my official and like Johnny Olm said, dude, that's my guy. <laughs> right? I love J. O. That's my guy. Shout out Johnny, dude. dude. You're a dog. Love J. O. Right? Yeah, great year. He had way. a great year. Yeah, hit a great year. And I remember like being on my official. And I'm just telling him like, yeah, wh- why should I come here? Like, I might, I'm, I want to sign. Why should I come here? Yeah. And just like, oh yeah, like if I do come, I'm only gonna be here for two years. Like, yeah. And I'm like saying this stuff too, and yeah. And I'm like, I look back like, when I hosted, and I'm like, dude, if someone ever said that to me, I would have been pissed. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, dude. But I th- it's funny like to look back on because he's probably looking at me. I'm in his dorm, just like, why should like, I come here? He's like, bro, shut up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, all right, dude. But I mean, you see comments like that all the time from kids who just don't know better. And yeah. like, I'm like, I guess in that position, cocky, probably like yeah. I got some things going on. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Bro, what do I need it? What do I need SE yeah. for? But yeah. dude, uh, in the long run, it's like, I had that confidence in myself to believe that like, why should I like, why should I come here? Yeah. Or like, do I, do I go sign? And ultimately I decided to go to school and, um, I knew that my plan, like, USC wasn't my end-all, be-all. Like, I knew there was a good shot that I'd only be there for two years and then go sign and play pro ball. But, yeah, you know, take COVID out of it. That first year was rough with injury and just, like, having to navigate COVID and everything. And um, just getting used to college baseball and, and the way college is, is ran. Yeah. Because, you know, in high school, you don't have the 6 a.m. lifts. You don't have all the Mm -hmm. classroom stuff. You don't have all the tutoring. You don't have all the uh, social, you know, aspects that are just at your reach. Like, they're at your disposal. You can can go, especially at SC. Like, that's a place where 
you look up on a Monday, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Monday. <laughs> dude, I'm serious. Though. You know, like you look no, up, I know, you look I up know. on a Monday, dude. Apartment 312 is ripping. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what's going on? All right, bro? dude, you, you might know three people in there, and now you're in there. Yeah. yeah. You, didn't do, you don't write your paper. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just yeah. balancing that type of stuff. And uh, then my sophomore year, like, it was a blast, bro. That was one of the best, like, chemistry teams I've ever played for. Yeah. I There's agree. not a guy on that team who I don't love yeah. to this day. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that was such a close, tight knit group that. Yeah. Um, it probably hurt us how tight we were yeah. because we were so close off the field that on the field, it was hard to like get on one another yeah. because it was oh, just so much I love agree. there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you didn't want to like hurt someone's feelings. hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. And, and I think if we would have went about it a different way, we probably would have been more successful and like held guys accountable, yeah. which is on us ultimately uh, on our team. But I look back like, dude, those days were just amazing. You know what I mean? Like, hanging out at the back house or back house just dude. going like as a yeah. team i'd never done anything with like that many guys who were bought in to like yeah. just kicking it you yeah. know like leisuring bro yeah. we were just like yeah we got our work in and then Kick everyone the everyone hung out like yeah. there was there was not like a i mean maybe some of the freshmen did their own thing but for yeah. the most part like we were all together like yeah. all the time yeah going out together hanging out together going to eat together like we did everything pretty pretty tight as a yeah, as a team which was which was amazing yeah so going off that let's talk about how we met <laughs> <laughs> you get to tell the story bro. yeah um so i remember like that summer um i went to go play in north carolina in the appalachian league and i tore my labrum hitting or like Again, had like a labor like dude Gosh. i know i know <laughs> plagued plagued by injuries yeah um but I, I had like a shoulder thing and i came home and started rehabbing and uh all that stuff and i see you uh cole gabe and matt <laughs> keating <laughs> my dogs dude you guys committed. my roommates juco juco bandits juco bandits yeah you guys like all committed and i'm like okay cole outfielder i'm gonna worry about that guy yeah matt pitcher um, hitter i'm not worried about that guy and i see dimitri <laughs> <laughs> i see dimitri lopez i'm like who the heck is this guy yeah right? Damn, he's an infielder. <laughs> no, you know, what's <laughs> funny about that is like I committed as an infielder, and I looked at the who the infield guys were. I see DeAndre Smith, Tyrese, uh, who else did we got? Johnny, Emilio, Emilio, Clay, Momo, Clay, and then I was yeah. like, oh gosh, like where am I gonna find a spot at? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's funny, yeah. dude. So I'm like stalking your Instagram. Who, who the heck is this guy, dude? Let me see. I'm like, oh damn, he's a switch hitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was hilarious. like, it's like, man. And then I mean, and at the time, it's like I want to play short, and like Tyrese is there too. Yeah, you're coming in. I'm thinking like you're a second baseman. Yeah. Like, oh man, bro, I'm gonna be, in, I'm gonna end up in right field, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little did you know, I could have thrown it to first base, <laughs> bro. So, um, then we we all move in, right? We move into our apartments and everything, and um, I started texting Cole a little bit. I had met Cole, I want to say, like, a few days earlier at uh, – were you there, too, at, at McKay? No. Okay, so I, I met Cole at uh, at the McKay, and uh, I was, like, got him on Snapchat, and you guys were all roommates, and I'm like, hey, like, I'm going to I'm gonna take these guys out. Welcome week. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. take them. There's, like, the, a party that was going on right yeah. across the street from my apartment, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take these dudes there. <laughs> Probably the worst party he's ever went to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. But to me, dude, at the time, dude, it was I'm so like, much fun. Oh right? my gosh, this is what dude, USC, yeah. like. This is awesome. Yeah. So I mean, that was the first time we yeah. we had met. Um, I had met Cole earlier, but that was the first time you and I had met yeah. and Matt and stuff. So that was that was like cool. And but like that was like the whole like that was what our team was, bro. We were so welcoming to a lot of people, like yeah. to everyone that was on our team. We were like really welcoming I, I think we were no um, i agree dude i felt like i could just like i didn't even i wasn't as social i was as social as i am now and i felt like guys were just like hey dude like come over here oh yeah and i was nervous especially yeah. as a juco guy right. coming to usc like i'm like oh man like these guys are gonna big league me and like right. yeah you know i have to like you know <laughs> play well to be cool or whatever yeah. but you guys everybody i mean tilo was super welcoming yeah. you 
um skeeto was and like all the homies yeah. dude like it trevor dude i met trevor like one butters. of the first nights dude. Butters, butters, dude. Dude. shout out butters yeah shout out butters dude like you guys are all homies and like i really appreciated that like you guys welping welcome welcoming us in not just me and matt and cole and stuff and all the freshmen i mean yeah. we were the only transfers if you think about it yeah and so like transfer like i already I already been at uic and then santa Ana, and like coming to a power five for the first time is a huge deal especially Man. for guys that are juco guys and you don't know what to expect and you know you guys had already you guys have a lot of great players and yeah. it's like where do we fit in like right. um but you guys were all so like hey though, like, come over here dude come to my house or we'll just kick it stuff yeah. like that yeah probably too much <laughs> <laughs> it's like dude smoke come on dude <laughs> I, I can't come kick it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably too much. I, I know, like, I mean, uh, Gilly were roommates, Gary Gillamette. Yeah. And, I mean, dude, there's an endless amount of stories. Uh, I, if we talked about all the stories, we'd be here We'd be here all night, yeah, right? And we'd yeah. never get off of this. But, <laughs> um, I mean, one that sticks out and, like, I'm still sick about. But I think, like, we, and we lived in a two-bedroom, one-bath apartment, like, super small in south central right yeah. we're in la yeah. and um yeah like uh bad man we got kyle wish bad coming man. over and i don't i don't know what happened because i was in my room i was trying to go to sleep and i just remember like gilly walking in my room and like say hey i i think uh we might be in trouble tomorrow and i'm like no way like why he's like yeah uh bunch of the guys started spraying the fire extinguisher <laughs> outside <laughs> and, we, and we lived in like we lived in this apartment complex and we all shared like a courtyard it's yeah. probably like 12 units right yeah. and i remember waking up the next morning just walking out there and just like seeing all of the fire extinguisher dust thing everywhere and garrett and i try to get a uh we try to get a hose and like spray it down. and it just That's didn't hilarious. work right it just didn't work yeah. whatsoever and um our our landlord yeah. got like a four or five noise complaints yeah. and everything and she came and met us the next day and she was like so we were on a three strike policy you oh, got three man. and you're out she yeah. gave us two for that one incident she gave us two she's like you guys mess up again you're done and i'm like dude she didn't play around she, yeah yeah <laughs> she didn't play around so we didn't really host much more after yeah that. But uh, you guys had a bump in speaker, dude. dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Shout out Chandler. Yeah, out I Chandler. remember you telling me that, yeah. and I I remember like going over there for the first time. We we're just ripping, ripping like Chris yeah. Lake, dude. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, this is sick. Chris Lake. That was what. That was like the first week of school, right? Yeah, that was we insane, went to the Chris Lake bro. Concert, and then we yeah. went to Back House. Back House. Hey, yeah. hung out there, and then went to the Chris Lake concert. Man, like, that was so much fun. That was insane. That was, dude. dude yeah. I mean, that, and that's what I mean, like go to school you're gonna have a million stories a million different things that yeah. have gone on and you'll forget a lot of them too yeah. like there's so much that we don't even talk about that's yeah. probably just as funny or funnier yeah. that we just forgot yeah um but you definitely meet some of your best friends for the rest of your life oh, absolutely. like in in college and uh you build those relationships and you know not everyone's gonna make it right yeah. not everyone's gonna be a big leaguer not everyone's gonna play at the next level who you play with in college yeah and it's like hey someone that you played with might be ceo of like the next big company and like yeah there's just so much networking and so many opportunities out there when you apply yourself to meet people and to just be able to talk and i think one thing that you and i talked about and discussed and like what we do well is you know we try not to leave a taste a bad taste in people's mouths right yeah and like we we've come off like very friendly and, and yeah. opening and welcoming to a lot of people. Yeah. And, you know, as we do this leisure thing together and like, we've tried to scale leisure house and, and, um, you know, get, get control of like the ideas and thoughts and everything that goes, that's going in the leisure house. Uh, we've been helped by a lot of people who weirdly enough, we've met through baseball. Right. Yeah. And this is like something that, I saw you doing for, I don't know what, about a year. Yeah. And I always like loved your idea and wanted to be a part of it. And, um, you know, it's easy to back someone up when, you know, they're passionate about something they have the, they don't have motivation, they have discipline. Right. Yeah. And you know, when you, when you care about something, you, you're going to give it your all, you're going to give it your best offer, you know, your, your best push and, uh, you're going to go for it. Right. Yeah. 
and it's it's easy for me to back you up because I see how much you care about Leisure House and much like beyond Leisure House, you care about what you do and what you want to do in this life, right? And it's easy to back you up and support you when I know that like you're doing all the right things that you need to be doing yeah. in order to reach whatever you deem as successful, right? Yeah. And for me, like, dude, why would I not back up and support one of my best friends and uh, whatever platform I have, right? Yeah. Try to help not only you, but like we've we both shared visions about what we believe leisure is. And uh, it's fun to see it starting to like come to life a little yeah. bit. And um, I think that this this idea and this company has and I has a chance to really, you know, scale to be massive and reach a lot of people and change a lot of lives and yeah. um i'm excited you know what i mean i'm excited to back you and support you and bounce ideas off of you and even yeah. the bad ones you know what i mean yeah. like we talk about all this stuff every single day and um i think the coolest part for me is watching you do what you do but also seeing how um just selfless you are and how you were willing to take me in and like listen to things i had to say yeah. when you've been doing this on your own for the last year you know i yeah. come in and like oh you're listening to the things i i have to say and yeah. i think when you and i are working together and, and trying to really scale and, and make this thing come to life like you know we really the world is our oyster we we yeah. you know we could do anything with this yeah. and i think that's for anyone if it's baseball business whatever it is that you want to do like you know get people on your team who care about you who you care about but people who are like-minded and who are going to work yeah. just as hard as you because if – like I love Leisure House and I love what Nick was doing with it and what he's continued to, continuing to do with it. But if he was like kind of BSing, like I'm not going to put my name out there yeah. for you or – you know I mean? Yeah. Especially when you're not trying to. And, and if you think about it that way, right, it's the same thing in, in baseball. Oh, you want a coach? You want your high school coach to talk to a college coach for you? Yeah. He's not going to do it if you BS him at practice exactly. and you don't listen to him and you don't, you know, you're not respectful and a lot of those things, right? So yeah. baseball is one of those just huge, it's a teacher, you know, it teaches you so many life lessons that yeah. you're going to hold on to for the rest of your life. And I definitely do think that, like, no offense to any other athletes out there or anything, but baseball is one of those things that builds just character because you have to learn how to fail you have to learn how to deal with adversity you have to learn how to be told no you know yeah. you know you got to learn how to take all these things and it's baseball is also one of those things where dude we could work as hard as we want and still go out there and suck yeah <laughs> literally it is, it, you know what i mean <laughs> it's not promised that you're gonna oh i hit 100 balls off the tee i'm gonna go three for three next game yeah probably not yeah right? <laughs> literally and that's the same thing with this right like this might not be a, a hit first time around or, you know what I mean? But it's about just sticking to your process and like letting the standard be the standard, letting your, your whole drive be discipline, not motivation. Right. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do when you wake up and you just don't feel like it, you don't have it in the tank? Like, are you going to fall to, I was unmotivated today. Or are you going to fall to, I was disciplined today. Yeah. You know what I mean? I still got all I of my like things that. done. And I think that, it's easier when you have a routine, right? Like there's things that you and I probably do every day. And for me, it's like the small things in my life, right? Like I want to knock out a hard task before I do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay. What's a hard task. Right. I mean, I don't love making my bed. Do you like, do you like to make your bed? No, no. but like, that's just the standard. It's the standard. You wake <laughs> up, make your bed, right? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> That's my bed's unmade right now. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I mean, dude, it's a standard. Like, you need to get comfortable doing, being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. So, if you wake up, you want to make your bed? Probably not, but make yeah. it. That's your small win for the day, right? And yeah. then, like, I've added the cold plunge every morning, right? Brutal. Like, yeah. I don't love doing it, but... Yeah. It's like, okay, I just knocked out two things that I don't like doing. The physical and mental. Dude, it's – the rest of the day is a cakewalk. You yeah. know what I mean? It, yeah. it makes – things I love to do, like lifting, running, hitting, infield, like being at the facility, it makes that a cakewalk. Yeah. Because the two hardest things I just got done, and it's not even 9 o'clock yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not even 9 in the morning, and I'm just – I just knocked out yeah. two tough things, right? So yeah. 
um and that's gonna look different for everyone like now everyone's yeah. gonna make their bed in the morning yeah <laughs> you know? yeah if i but, if i don't make my bed my mom might be yeah. mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but like what can you do to complete a physical uh task and a mental task right what does that look like for you what's gonna like i think i read i saw this video where um when you do something that you don't like it builds resilience oh it was andrew huberman and he was saying like every time you do something that you don't want to do like whether it's cold plunging or sauna or right. it could be whatever it is but when you do something that you are just don't want to do your brain actually like grows oh yeah and you know you can fact check andrew huberman i'm just repeating what he said but <laughs> i think like doing those type of things like you're growing your brain like you're proving to yourself daily that you can do stuff right. like hard stuff yeah and cold plunging is not easy um sauna is not easy especially no. 15 minutes like right. dude we i mean we've realized like being in there for 10 minutes we're like oh damn we got five, five more, more minutes, minutes like, yeah hey, like this yeah. is brutal yeah so doing a task like where you're putting your physical and mental um self into a position where it's like okay i need to do something that i'm gonna like challenge it right and you you beat it like it just tells yourself okay i i just did that all right what's next i can do anything yeah, yeah I, I can do I, it. I just did this. Like, the hardest thing i thought was get like the hardest task i had today i just dominated yeah like anything else is a cakewalk yeah. bro yeah. What, whatever it is yeah. right and i think that's what allows athletes to um and and this is why like leisure house why we want to scale to just everyone right and not just athletes right because mm -hmm. you know most athletes at a high level they just get it they understand what it takes right they understand um just the daily grind the process of things and that's what we're trying to push to not just at to everyone of like yeah. the daily grind of doing things you don't want to do and like you know you want to make a change you want to make you want to see things go different for your life uh probably not gonna happen doing the same things that you do or like um you know, that, that saying of like starting today is true. Like you got to yeah. start, yeah. why not start right now? Why yeah. not change your life and, and rebrand yourself and rebrand the, the way you think about things. And yeah. that's why like I, I love and I can back Leisure House so much is because we're giving people a platform and an opportunity to understand and realize what that's like and, mm -hmm. and what sort of like fulfillment that brings your life when you do the hard things. You know what I mean? When you work yeah. hard for something and, and and it pays off and you know i think that's a feeling everyone should should have at least once in their life of you know really dedicating themselves to whatever it is that they're doing um and see it pay off for them if it's in a relationship or if it's in a um you know at the gym and you know trying to make progress on their the way their body looks or diet or reading a book or whatever it is like the fulfillment you get from completing a task is just different yeah. and why not complete as many tasks in a day as you can, right? Exactly. Day Why one, not 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 one day. Right, right. Yeah. And I mean, and it you see it like, even with this, right? It's hard. This is leisure house is hard. There's a lot of nights that you and I spend on the phone or, uh, just bouncing things off of each other. But it's, you know, um, success is not like a short road, you know, traveled. It's it's one of those things where it's gonna take a long time, no matter mm -hmm. what it is you're doing. It's gonna take a while. Yeah. And it's the people who get there are the people that stay consistent st with it. Yeah. You stick know what I mean? You just do discipline. it. You yeah. just, you just do it. And like Nike, just do it. Like, dude, yeah. they're spot on. Like, yeah. Literally. <laughs> they're spot on. You want to separate yourself. You want to, you want to find a way to grow in, in this, in this life. And especially in this society now where, um, it's almost, you know, a lot of our instant generation, gratification. instant gratification, right? It's, it's one of those things where, Dude, just because of the the groundwork you've laid and like a lot of the things that you do, you'll look up in ten years and be in a a good spot because you just get it and you work Stuck and you it. grind and you know it's a fall. Welcome to the suck, right? Yeah. Everyone called welcome to the suck. <laughs> to the suck well, yeah. dude, beast it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like grind it out. You're gonna everyone's has to do it. You're gonna have to do it. Why not? Why not be, great at it. be yeah. why not like separate yourself and be really really good at whatever everyone else hates yeah you know exactly. what i mean like but that's where it comes down to just that like being able to be mentally tough and honestly where leisure comes in and what we promote and like 
yeah, work hard, but know when to treat yourself. Know when to, like, be soft with yourself and yeah, and do the things that you want to do and that you like to do. And, yeah. Um, I think that's where we have a perfect balance, and yeah. that's what we're trying to teach the world and yeah, and just give people that like understanding of, hey, like leisure right when yeah. discipline meets pleasure <laughs> yeah. yeah literally you know and what I, mean? I think it's important to like take a day for yourself or like just go hang out with your buddies hang out Man. with your, your siblings right. your family um and that can look like mini golf you can look at the driving range it could be going to social events with your buddies like yeah it doesn't it's not one thing that everybody has to do everyone's got a different view of leisure yeah um and like what I've realized that leisure is to me is like, it's not like taking off the, the gas pedal, but you're just allowing yourself to be yourself. You know, you're not just a baseball player. You're not just a, a volleyball player, soccer player, uh, softball player, basketball player, football player, whatever it is. You're more than that. And so how can you just like enjoy life outside of your sport? Because there's so much more to baseball and who we are as athletes And we realize that, like, I mean, we're just we're more than athletes. We're not just athletes. Right. Right. And so I think it's important to enjoy your days. How can you make your days fun? You know, like cold plunging, sauna. That's great. Hitting, lifting. That's awesome. But at the end of the day, like, okay, you can end it with some mini golf or something or bowling or just like, I don't know if you like playing video games, that, that could be part of it. But like go outside and do something cool. Like I love to ride my skateboard touch and listen to music, touch, touch some, some grass. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I think it's important just to like, um, find things that you like to do outside of your sport. Um, and so, yeah, like my little brother, like, for example, like I, I've been taking him to go to the driving range and like, I'm teaching him what life is outside of baseball. Cause he's in that, that mode of like working, five times a day like he's got baseball practice high school lifting right and then outside of that he's got lessons he's got pitching lessons he's got um weight lifting sessions like he's tired he's like dude like what do i like i feel like i have no time stressed out i'm like dude you gotta like what do you like to do right i don't know i was like i was like do you want to go to the range he's like yeah (laughs) figured out that he likes to hit golf balls yeah i'm like trying to teach him to play golf because golf is a, a social like networking place where you can meet a lot of cool people and you can also have fun with your buddies. Like right. it's just like figuring out what things that you can do outside of your sport that you can just live your life. Right. And that's what I preach. Live your life. Like yeah. I wouldn't be who I am today if I just like was just baseball. Like, right. Uh, yeah. You I grew can't up, be. I grew up just like baseball, baseball, baseball. But like, I've realized that like I'm so much more than that. And that's yeah. where, where, why I am where I am today because I know I'm more than baseball right. like, bi- like running a business and like figuring out w- how this is going to work is part of my leisure like right. yeah. you know so yeah. like figuring out what your leisure is is what is going to help you separate yourself in the long run not just in the, in your sport right yeah and I mean I'm, I'm super <laughs> thankful to you also for like just allowing me to come in and kind of piggyback you with the leisure stuff and Uh, trying to scale and promote and like make this thing grow you know what I mean because I mean I'm in the off season right now right and okay we work out from 11 30 to about 3 34 go get some lunch get home around 4 35 or whatever it is right and okay but that's like a small part of my day what am I doing in the morning what am I doing when I get back from from the facility and stuff and Mm -hmm. That's why I've been super, I'm super thankful for the opportunity to work with you and, uh, just combine and, and just, you know, uh, go through this process with you and go through this journey of, of yeah. growing Leisure House because it's given me another opportunity to apply what I've learned from baseball to this side and like get home and like, it's not even work. You know what I mean? Like we get on the computer and we start doing whatever it is we're doing for yeah. leisure house. And it's yeah. like, it's fun. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. and it, it's cool to take pride in something and, and just watch it continue to grow and grow and grow. And, uh, we really like at leisure house, we really, really think that, um, the steps to, to success, right. And to 
success looks different for everyone. Like my success will look different from what your success looks like. Right. We don't, yeah. we don't necessarily want the same things in life and yeah. we don't value the same things in life and that's totally okay. Right. But yeah. it's whatever you find to be your, your pinnacle, like your, your peak of success. Right. And, um, we think that we can help a lot of people find, we don't want to do it for you, but find your way to do it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And, like yeah like leisure house is not a place it's a people Mm -hmm. right it's a mindset it's a thing it's something that you do you just you like it's a standard we work hard and we play hard yeah we like to have a good time and that then saying that doesn't mean that we're out every weekend or doing dude like we just hang out you know what i mean we're in we're in the garage right now kicking it yeah this is leisure (laughs) this is leisure you know what i mean like we're kicking it with the boys talking and and this is sick you know what i mean like this is one of those things where, um, you know, we do a lot of different small activities together and, um, no matter what it is, like just being able to be present, you know, that's always, that's like the biggest thing is be where your feet are, be present. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Just worry about right now. Right. Like yeah. be, be present, be patient. Yeah, right. Exactly. Be present, be patient. Yeah. Uh, because you never know like anything, anything could happen. Uh, any like you're you're one step away from changing your life you're one especially swing away, dude. dude one swing away yeah. from you know what i mean something yeah. like something like click for you tomorrow you might be able to Literally. hit 100 in the cage yeah. <laughs> <laughs> damn bro you don't gotta help me like no, that just... <laughs> <laughs> no i agree dude yeah. oh um this last half we're gonna live stream so if you guys are on here thanks for watching but thank you um going off what we were talking about earlier yeah um a great coach once told me, Coach Nick Mingione, um, use what you do as a, like, you have a platform, not a pedestal. And that really resonates with me really well because, like, what we do can, like, we can easily just be like, oh, yeah, like, I'm this, I'm that, like, not trying to help people and use what you have as on Instagram, your socials, like, what you do professionally. Like, you can't, you could use that just for yourself. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And so... Leisure House, like I'm, I'm putting Leisure House on my platform. I want to keep, continue to put it on bigger platforms because I believe what we do here is like can really change people's lives for sure. And so, like, that's why I love that. Like, what he told us that, like, we were at uh, Florida and we were just like in a team meeting, and he was just like going on, and then he was like, "You guys have an opportunity to be like, this is a platform, not a pedestal," and like. Ever since he told me that, dude, like it changed my outlook on like what I'm doing with Leisure House and like what I'm what I'm doing as an athlete. I have an opportunity to do what I do and like put it on a platform where people can like really learn from it. For sure. I mean? Yeah. So no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That's uh that's great of like you know, in order to do that you can't have an ego. Yeah. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah. you know, leave the ego at the door and yeah. uh be able to um you know, have some camaraderie and, and be able to work with others and be able to learn from others and teach others to be a leader. And, uh, yeah, using your platform, not a pedestal. That's amazing. You know, yeah. it really forces you to be a team player and not, um, be an eye guy. You, yeah. you always hear it all the time. Like, Oh, yeah. that guy's OP, his own program, yeah. but you can't. <laughs> he's on his own program. Yeah. No, you can't, you can't be own program when, uh, yeah. you're trying to use your platform to spread, uh, positivity and to spread joy and to spread a lot of things that uh you know the world needs and yeah. um i think like with leisure house and you know what we've been pushing and uh just from like the little clips and little reels and messages and stuff like we really want people to live their best lives and to uh you know and it's different for everyone of what their best life looks like but being able to apply yourself to give 100 percent of whatever that is of your all, you know, give 100% of that to, uh, whatever cause it is that you, that you're willing to push for. And, yeah. uh, for us, it just happens to be, uh, health and, and wellness and, you know, just mental health and being able to form relationships, be present, be, be there for others, be there for yourself, you know, show up for yourself. Don't, yeah. you know, at the, at the end of the day, you, you don't want to let people down, but you don't want, you don't want to let yourself down either. Exactly, right. Yeah. And, uh, at leisure house, I feel like that's what we promote. That's what we've been pushing. And 
that's why it's easy for me to back you up on on all these on on this journey you know what i yeah. mean and um you're one of my best friends and it's fun this is cool to yeah. you know see this thing grow with you and like yeah i'm i think i just think it's amazing like all the the late night phone calls the late night uh facetimes and and stuff like that where like dude that was a great idea then or like yeah. dude what were you thinking that yeah. idea sucked <laughs> <laughs> like no i'm not doing that <laughs> yeah dude i mean it's like like you said like it's crazy how like how much it's grown just like from you being a part of it yeah and i appreciate like all your ideas yeah. and everything you share with me because like it does mean a lot because yeah. this very room used to just be a garage for storage right and then we turned it into uh during coven it was a place like where you and your buddies were training yeah my buddies would come here and like yeah. train and, yeah. and it became like okay like okay these guys are coming over and then we would hang out and right it was like the leisure house right and then, like yeah um it's crazy like there used to be like an opening right here and like this was just like, a cage and i would just hit in here hit, right hit, yeah hit, play music lift whatever and now we're doing podcasts in it yeah and i would never thought like i would be doing a podcast with deandre smith yeah you know? dude it, it's wild it's uh in the grand scheme of things some random guy coach yeah literally <laughs> take a chance on yeah. two random kids <laughs> put a team together 30 dude. i don't even know how many are in college what is it 35 or 40 40 maybe yeah, yeah. random day. guy took a chance on 40 random kids and yeah. those are your best friends for the rest of your life yeah. and uh it's just cool to see how it all uh transforms and and turns into just beautiful relationships between uh people you yeah. know what i mean and 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 that's what's so great about life is uh, you know, you have the ability to feel things. You have the ability to go through different emotions, different feelings, different thoughts, different ideas. Absolutely. Uh, and it's about, you know, what you do with those ideas and thoughts and feelings and emotions. And, uh, you know, like it, it's a beautiful thing to be a human being, to mm -hmm. feel, you know what I mean? To, yeah. to live life, to express yourself through whatever it is that you want to express yourself through. And, um, that's why I love like the platform that, that we have and that we're starting to build because we can talk about whatever it is that we want. If it's baseball, amazing. If it's health and wellness, amazing. If it's yeah. just, Oh, you remember that story? Or you remember yeah. when we did that? When we yeah. like that, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to, to have in, um, you know, like not have an ego and to share my, my testimony, the things I've been through with, with, the world you know what i mean yeah. and, <clears throat> and ultimately try to help the next generation of ball players and also just the next generation of people yeah, you know what i mean absolutely. And, and if it's in baseball if it's non-baseball whatever it is like just uh want to inspire the next generation we want to help kids we want to help you know yeah. teens and we want to help everyone we want to help adults and yeah professionals <clears throat> like profession yeah just like you know promote what we know is can help right you know what i mean so yeah. Um, also like what I was going to say, like you, a random coach put together a team, like, <laughs> dude, like you think about it like, when I was going through my journey, I had offers from multiple smaller schools where I could have gone full ride, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to USC. Like, I, I just knew like that was my route. And for you, the, the story you were telling about earlier with, you know, Johnny, you're like, Oh yeah, yeah like, why <laughs> should I come here? And then you ended up going there. Yeah. Like I was literally like. I will do anything to go to USC. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And like the fact that we were at two ends of the spectrum ended up at the same place. And now we're doing podcasts together. Yeah, it's sick. It just shows you that anything could happen. Anything. Literally. Yeah. It, you know? It's so cool. It's so cool. It's all about perspective, the way you view things, the yeah. way you see things. Um, and your perspective was obviously a lot different than mine. But at the end of the day, we met somewhere in the middle. And, you know, it, it's built a relationship that will last a lifetime. And yeah. You no, know, not just you and I, but a lot everyone we've played with, you know, along along the way. And um I I genuinely think that no hate against any other sports, but baseball is <laughs> one of those sports where you really, really get to know the person next to you. Yeah. And uh you know, like not too many people have access to a collegiate or you know, a uh, professional clubhouse, but the clubhouse is amazing. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> a clubhouse is one of the coolest places you can ever spend time right yeah. like yeah. you know like no a way. lot of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
the clubhouse is where you know your your boys become your boys and and yeah. it's so it's super cool to like just think back and reflect on all the great like things that have happened all the funny moments in the clubhouse and like you know after after a game where you you get boat raced or something yeah and, the there's a guy in there who you know all the coaches leave and then yeah there's one guy who just cracks a joke and the whole clubhouse is dying he just got beat by 10 or something you know what i mean it's just oh, yeah. you look back at those moments and it's like dang like that's that's funny like yeah. you you remember those things and you don't you never remember like i mean you re, you do remember your personal yeah. stats of what you did but you yeah. don't really like talk about oh you remember when i went three for three with two yeah. homers or yeah. blah, blah blah you like talk about you remember when Nick fell off his scooter. <laughs> <laughs> or when Cole Gabe stole my scooter. Oh, Cole yeah. Gabe, shout dude. Out Cole Gabe. Yeah, shout out, dude. I remember when you stole my scooter, dude. It's all right. I but, really um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's what's so great about baseball. It's a melting pot. You know what I mean? You get a bunch of people from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, international, and, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout out, homie. <laughs> shout out, Adrian. Yeah. Um, but, no, I think that's – I think, like, since being in pro ball, I've seen the difference of – uh, professional clubhouse versus uh, collegiate clubhouse and there definitely is a huge difference just by the way guys handle themselves and go about their business yeah um but yeah i mean you can't beat yeah. the clubhouse before they, you go into the professional and the mets and all that let's talk a little bit about your sophomore year clubhouse and like how that shaped you and got you ready for uh draft day and then mm -hmm. playing professionally with the mets oh man i mean sophomore year is such a blur for me it's it just like it just happened so fast right yeah and freshman year didn't really have much of a freshman year like you know, we moved into the dorms in December right so and I was hurt most of the time so exactly. like it, it it was it was gone like you know blink yeah. of an eye it was gone freshman year was kind of uh thrown to the side right and then my sophomore year it just seemed like we were catching up on so many things that we had missed out from our my freshman year. Like, my class was really, really close at, uh, I guess, sophomore class when my last year there. Yeah. So, um, we did a lot of catching up and a lot of hanging out. Like, dude, we were – I mean, I was a freshman, and I wanted to follow every rule. I didn't want to get in trouble. So, when they said, like, no hanging out, like – You didn't I wasn't, hang out, yeah. I mean, maybe I hung out a little yeah, bit, a little but bit, – yeah, <laughs> But I wasn't, like, out at parties or anything like yeah. that because I was like, dude, I don't want to get COVID. I don't want to get in trouble, like, yeah. you know, all that all that uh, stuff. But sophomore year, that was the first time I had really uh, experienced such a melting pot of people from all over and just different personalities, uh, just the way people carry themselves. And, and I was able to see how I fit into that and how I want it to be perceived by people and what I wanted, what I wanted people to think of like about me when they mm -hmm. thought about me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I think that prepared me when I got to pro ball because I'd seen what it was like to be one of the younger guys in the clubhouse and also like, uh, just figured out how to carry myself in a, in a clubhouse, you know, and when you're in high school, we had a locker room, but in high school it's like that place is wild you know i mean yeah. you you go in there and you do you just do dumb things you do stupid things in in high school in your locker room right oh, yeah <laughs> some stories you can't tell but yeah. <laughs> um no but i think when i got to pro ball i was very uh mature and uh didn't didn't do anything like that was dumb you know yeah. you just you know i got just it knew, i just yeah. understood it more and i carried myself more i've been through failure i didn't been through adversity i learned how to deal with things so you know when you make that next step to the next level and like dude you're getting beat like yeah. you guys are really good it, it's uh how do how can i bounce back how can i start over and how can i come back the next day in a good mindset so you know it, you 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 know every it happens to everyone but uh you're gonna show up to the to the yard and like not feel like being there yeah you know what i mean but how can you lock it in and and just get grounded to be present and to be where you are and to uh get through those days you know what i mean so um when i got to pro ball it wasn't much of a reality check for me yeah. <clears throat> at all um and that's why i think college is such a great thing for for kids who are coming out of like high school and have a chance to sign or go to school i think you learn about yourself and who you want to be 
on and off the field, right? And um, yeah, and, and you learn how to have some discernment when it comes to people who you want to be around too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think college is one of those things where the clubhouse is real, real tight, right? Yeah. And obviously when you get to pro ball, like there's guys who um, don't speak English, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's a language the barrier. There. There's a language barrier there, right? Yeah. So it's, it, it's a lot more clicky yeah. than, than, colleges right in 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 college you you have to have culture you have to have uh like team first mentality and like the guy next to me first and then like you know you got to put the guy next to you first in everything you do and in pro ball you kind of get away from that a little bit yeah um but coming out of college like those those are foundations that have been set by your coach and by the culture that you were brought up in at whatever university you went to. Right. Yeah. And I think that's where I had an advantage on others was because, you know, the high school I went to, we preached that too. And it felt like when I got to college, I was already prepared for, for a lot of things that other guys weren't because of the high school I went to. And they do a great job of just coaching. And, and uh, like I said earlier, like the classroom days and just teaching the game and, and uh, just learning. Right. Yeah. So when I got to college, I knew how to fail. I knew how to act around others. I knew how to hold myself to uh, to a high standard. And um, same thing when I got to pro ball. Um, it's just all about you know just work. You gotta work. Yeah. You gotta you got you gotta put in the work. You gotta you gotta grind. You gotta apply yourself. And um, yeah, I mean it's a grind, dude. You play six games a week. You know yeah. your only off day is Monday. Yeah, and that it's is a crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Gosh. I mean, you're doing obviously not every day, but most days you're you're getting out there for your early defensive work, for BP, for you know hitting in the cages and stuff. And you're you know they, the the days get really repetitive, and uh, it's just about finding balance. And that was something I had struggled with my first full season, um, kind of like came into camp had a had a like freak accident got hit by a pitch ended up fracturing my scap didn't yeah. I didn't break camp I uh got out to Brooklyn around like June I want to say and I was really 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 hyper focused on baseball yeah I was like this is my life I'm breathing baseball like just everything is baseball yeah wake up in the morning I'm I'm watching uh, video and looking over reports, which you, you need to do, you have to do. Right. But it's after the game, I didn't leave baseball at the field. I, I always brought it back home with me. Right. Mm-hmm. And it made it like, you know, it made it like hell for me. And I, but I did to myself, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? I did to myself. I was like journaling every single at bat, which is good. I think like you need, you need to do those things, but you also need to find t- time to, to take for yourself where you don't think about the game. And I agree. Um, it just got super, like I was really, really hard on myself because I wanted to succeed. I wanted, I wanted to be really, really good. And I wanted to stand out and separate myself from other, other guys. Right. And when you try to force those types of things, it doesn't work out well for you. And you put a lot of unneeded pressure on yourself. Right. Yeah. So this past year, like, after learning more about myself and like the type of player I wanted to be and just the type of person I wanted to be on and off the field. Right. It made this year much more enjoyable for me Yeah, playing. It made showing up every day way more enjoyable. And instead of like locking myself in a room, hyper analyzing all of my at bats and, and, and everyone's different. It, that probably works for some other people, but just didn't work for me. Right. I, yeah. I had spent too much time away from the game, still thinking about the game, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, like you, you – days in pro ball, since you play so much, like days can stack on top of each other, man, and, and it's hard to separate like, hey, you know, I suck tonight. How can I come back tomorrow and not suck? Yeah. Well, the only way you could do that is if you just completely reset and, you know, you forget about – that last night yeah. and I didn't understand that you know what I mean I was so yeah. process oriented in a way that hurt me instead of helping me it's good to be process oriented but 
I, I was overdoing it. And then this past year, another just freak accident, unlucky thing. Third game of the year, third or fourth game of the year, playing the outfield and coming in on a ball and uh, have a bad hamstring injury and had some setbacks during my rehab. And uh, But when I got back to playing, you know, I was way more – I was grateful to be out there. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, I appreciated the game way more. And I was able to separate baseball and just my personal life. And, you know, I started, like, hanging out with friends all the time and going to dinners and uh, just got back to that feel of college of, like, yeah, you know what, from whatever time we're at the yard, we're at the yard. But then yeah. when we leave or, you know, when the game is over, we get back it's into the clubhouse, it's leisure time. You know, yeah. we're hanging out, we're kicking it. And it just made being around so much more enjoyable. Like, yeah. the people who you surround yourself with are either going to make your time or, or break it. You know exactly. what I mean? And, and for me, I, I had a great group of guys. And, uh, you know, the another another case of, like, the, the friendships that I've made in pro ball are, like, a lifetime also. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's another thing that, that we've talked about. Like, not everyone who I'm playing pro ball with is going to be playing the big leagues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of those guys are going to be the CEOs and, and run major companies and, and be in positions of power. And it's like, okay, well, hey, you remember when we played A ball together? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, give me a job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes full, full circle, dude. Dude, like, yeah, it, it does. But um, for me, this year was a lot of fun. And, like, next year going in, when I get to camp, like, it's my third spring training. I know the ins and outs of of what's expected out of you and and what you have to do to get better. And like it's your career, you you got to take full charge of of what you do and your process and your routines and uh, you know just staying on top of whatever it is that you do. And um, just like anything with experience, you'll you'll learn and you'll you'll grow into into your own. So yeah, uh, no, I'm I'm excited for this year. Uh, excited to be at futures right now and in oh, training yeah. and getting ready for a big year and you know I'm I'm excited the body feels great just keep it that way and you know I've I've been on the shelf the last two years because of some just unfortunate things happening to me but um, I think that's the coolest thing is like it's hard right you see guys and you're like dude I'm, I'm just like way better than that guy or yeah. you know what I mean or oh, it's yeah, like trust me, I know. dude like what <laughs> what are we doing right yeah but, but it's it's my time it's not it's not yours it's not anyone else's you know what I mean it's like it's whatever God has for me will happen you know what I mean yeah you know he's where the joy is and if it's bringing me joy it's bringing me peace I know that's from him right yeah so I just try to take it day by day and and uh just try to you know keep track of the small wins, keep track of the little wins because those add up over time. And next thing you know, you're right where you were supposed to be yeah. and you're right where you need to be. And, uh, I think that like this, this year for me, just putting all the things I've learned about myself together, what type of player I, I am, what type of player I want to be, what type of person I am, what type of person I want to be. And, and I think it comes full circle to, you know, when, when it's about that time, like what type of husband do you want to be? What type of father do you want to be? Uh, what type of friend do you want to be? You have siblings, what type of brother do you want to be? Yeah. What type of son do you want to be? Um, I, I think that it, baseball teaches you more than just baseball. It's, it teaches you a lot of valuable life lessons. And, uh, just, we, we say it all the time, be patient and be, like, be present, be patient, right? Yeah. Be where your feet are. Be where your feet are. Uh, so you just got to hold yourself to that, hold yourself to the things that, you know, I think everyone should, should have some values and, and what they believe in and, and hold themselves accountable to it. Because I think at the end of the day, the, the worst thing you do is, is let yourself down yeah. because subcon. I think everyone, everyone has dreams. Everyone has ideas. Everyone knows where they want to be and, and what places they want to get to. And you know how to get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you, you can map out your life and you can map out each step in, of what it takes to get there, but you just got to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's a separator is doing it. And like we talked about earlier, like in a society of instant gratification, it's never going to be that. For yeah. some people, it might be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some people might post a viral video tomorrow or someone might yeah. win the lottery or someone might just know someone and they get put into a position where they succeed right away, right? Yeah. But 
it's whatever your circumstance is, you need to grind and 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 just, you know, fire on all cylinders of whatever it is that you're doing. And um, like it, like I said, that's why I'm so passionate about Leisure House and what you're doing is because, you know, you're giving people the opportunity to have that resource to, to do so. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I, I think Leisure House has a lot of potential to reach a lot of people and change lives. And uh, I'm excited to be on this journey with one of my best friends and someone who I care about deeply. And like, you know, I wouldn't be so on board to do this with you if you didn't care about it. Yeah. But you care about it. Yeah. I do. And, <laughs> and you can see it. And, and that's with anything you do, right? Like you see someone care about something, you're going to support them. You're going to back them up because you genuinely see that they're applying themselves and caring about something and want to do something yeah. compared to like the guy who's like, Oh, you know what? I, I might make a video every yeah three months, and but and I mean, dude, it all correlates. I can go back and a coach can see a player applying himself and doing that, and like he might not be as talented, but he's kid works it. hard. He's gonna be out there. Yeah, you know I mean, they're gonna throw the kid out there who yeah. works hard and who listens and who's coachable and who can just absorb as much information as possible. Um. But yeah, dude, I, I I love what you're doing with Leisure House, and I'm super excited to be on board and uh, welcome in, hopefully, you know, millions of people who yeah. that's <laughs> who, dream, who love leisure, yeah. who love to kick it. <laughs> yeah, dude, I no, I appreciate you being on board with it because it does mean a lot to me, and it's it's grown more into um, more than just a place, like I, you know, we were talking about earlier. Yeah. But it's becoming a more of a people. And now that I'm, you know, have you on board and all the other guys that are on board as well. Um, it's just awesome to see how far it's grown. Right. And I think we were talking about earlier about having something outside of baseball. I think that's why I was able to have the year that I had because I was also, okay, baseball's done. Okay. I got to do my leisure house stuff. Right. Business. And so allowing myself to separate the baseball and the leisure outside of you know just baseball and like just destroying myself oh you had a bad game right it was like oh i had a bad game but i you know i gotta do all this stuff because you know i care about this as well yeah and so i was able to be free myself up and just be the player that i am and i found that like i felt like a lot of coaches were trying to like narrow me into like a a specific role like oh you're a first baseman so you got to hit homers you're a dh you just got to hit homers and i'm like dude like it's just not who I am. Right. I'm, yeah. I'm just a guy that I'm just a ball player. I'm going to get on base. You're a junkyard dog. I'm a junkyard <laughs> dog. I'm going to get things done. Like that's just who I am. And I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to hit 20 plus home runs, Right. but I'm the guy with two outs, you know, we're down by one run and I'm going to get on base. Right. Like yeah. that's just what I do. Yeah. And so, um, allowing myself to free up outside of baseball, just allowed my game to improve in itself. Right. And having leisure house, just like, makes me dive in more into the uh person i am not just the athlete you know right what i mean yeah. so um i've it's come a long way dude like my dad used to wake me up at like 6 a.m dude but like, leisure time's over like we got to go take ground balls at 7 a.m <laughs> like i used to like kick me on the air mattress like yeah. i'm like dang dude like it's covid like, it was, we got no responsibilities right, but dude, like give it a break yeah man. it's like but that's the standards like dude it doesn't matter that the world shut down like you're yeah, still you're getting, still grinding you're yeah. still grinding you're so, still working hard and now we're like doing podcasts and we have these big ideas of what we want to do with it and it's like it's just crazy how far it's come and it's not even you know on the tip of the iceberg of where no. we want it to be yeah no it's it's a it's a amazing movement in uh you know, we, we're starting to pick up a little bit of traction and starting starting to get people interested about like, hey, what's Leisure House? Like, is, you know, what what's that? Leisure House? But <laughs> no, it's dope. I mean, um, it, it's pretty cool. And like we were talking about platform, like, dude, like we both have a platform from baseball. Yeah. But we're going to reach so many people that don't even that might not even know what baseball is. You know yeah. what I mean? Or that yeah. don't know the game. But like, that's yeah. like the beautiful thing about it. And yeah. Um, and th that's what I've realized, like by doing these camps and like, yeah, they're small right now, but I've had kids that have like never really played baseball, yeah. like dream of, you know, playing baseball. Now. Right. 
and they're taking the initiative to do private lessons or taking the initiative to go to weekly uh, hitting groups. Right. And like these kids like have never, they've only been around, like they're literally from like out of the country. Right. Yeah. And they just are so interested in like playing baseball and learning the game and finding out that I, I care more about who they are as a person more than the baseball player. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. And so that's what leisure house is. It's like caring about more than just the athlete. It's like who you are as a person. Like, what do you like to do? Oh, you like to go to car shows and take videos. Like, that's awesome. Like, I want to help you like grow that. Like, yeah. how can you, uh, you know, make that your thing? Um, and so it's just beautiful seeing like all these, you know, younger kids, like just having these dreams and aspirations and like seeing it come to life. Right. You know, like no matter what type of player they yeah, are, like, like just like you said, just taking the first step to do it is yeah. like a blessing in itself. Yeah. It's it's amazing to, yeah. to like apply themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the first time that I've ever really experienced that, like getting somebody to get, get out of their comfort zone was my freshman year of high school. Um, I, my two best friends in high school, um, Alan and Carlos, shout out Alan and Carlos, <laughs> dude, they like never played a lick of baseball in their life. And they saw like I was playing baseball and I was on varsity and like playing shortstop and whatnot. And I'm like, dude, like, like I wanted to hang out with them more. So I'm like, dude, you should play baseball. And they're like, no, like, dude, I, I don't even have a glove. <laughs> dude, I gave Alan, I got a glove. I, I don't think my dad knows this, but like he, I got like a brand new pro preferred glove for my dad. And I gave Alan my glove because he didn't have a glove. Jeez. I'm like, hey, you can have this. Yeah. I want you to come out. And he literally took that and like that's started sweet. playing. that's so sweet and so yeah he didn't end up playing college baseball but he met new people he was you know putting himself out there and like carlos is like a graphic designer now and he's helped me with some of the leisure house stuff and he's painted me a couple of pictures that i have like one of like the best friends that i met from you know high school and like that's when I knew, like, because I cared about, like, people. Like, these guys owed nothing to me. Yeah. And I wanted them to just – I just wanted to hang out more. Right. And I was just like, hey, like, you can use my glove. Yeah. Like, to me, I'm like, yeah. that's not that big of a deal. Like, right. Pro preferred glove. Like, I got <laughs> two of them. Like, you take one. Yeah. And so, like, that's just, like, how I am as a person. And I want to, like, you know, help people realize, like, you can be a good person every yeah. single day. Yeah. It doesn't that's matter what it comes what down to. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You can let someone borrow a pencil – or somebody's like, dang, like, you know, I, I haven't eaten all day. Oh, I got an extra protein bar. Like, right. You know? Yeah. So like it all comes down to like just being a good person and like helping people grow in themselves, whether baseball is their passion or not. Or not like yeah. baseball can lead to so many open doors and it's helped me get to where I am today. And like so many people have helped me get to where I wouldn't be where I am without so many people. Right. And having those people reach out to me, whether it was like, you should come to J Sarah or come to this tournament and you know, you'll be great or whatever. Like giving me those opportunities help me realize, okay, like I can do this to other people too. Right. Like maybe I can't pay for them to go to this tournament, but I can let them borrow a glove. Right. Or I gave a kid that he just started playing baseball the other day and he's been training with me. I gave him a bat that I had at USC. Yeah. Like those things to the me, blue it's saber. Like, the blue saber. No, this guy just gave away my bat. <laughs> hey, that was DeAndre's bat. <laughs> my bad. No, but that that's the you know beauty. I mean? like, yeah, that's awesome. It's just like making these kids' days. Like, here, here's a bat. Like, nah, yeah, and, and, you know? and for him, like, that's something he's going to remember forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, my first bat. Yeah. Like, how I, cool I, is that? Like, I mean, the other bat he had was not that great. So right. I was like, dude, like, yeah. the least I could do is give you yeah. this Louisville select power. Like, right. Right. I don't, I'm never going to use it again. Yeah. And so I think that's just the beauty of things of how you can change, um, kids lives, even professional athletes right. lives. Like yeah. Just by, um, you know, sharing your two cents on things that you've learned. Right. Like Caden, uh, the other, like he's been struggling with the swing and like, I just told him a few things that I've learned that might help him. And like, you know, he doesn't have to listen to me, but he yeah. was like asking me questions yeah. and stuff like that. And like seeing how the impact you can have with the platform you have, not the pedal stool. Right. It's so important. I think it's, it's just like more people just need to do that. You know, right. it's, it's yeah. not hard to be a, a good person. Yeah. You know? No, that's, that's exactly spot on. It's not hard to be a good person. You yeah. know what I mean? And like spreading positivity and love is like such a beautiful thing. And you know, I mean, like I feel like it, it takes more effort and more energy to be like kind of mean to someone you Literally, know what i mean yeah and uh especially when you don't have to and, and i think 
you have times and moments that you look back on and reflect where you're like, man, I wish I could have been better yeah. in that moment. But that's what the whole journey is about, right? Is, mm-hmm. is it coming into your own and, and realizing that I don't want to be a person that doesn't spread positivity, doesn't spread joy, doesn't spread love. You know, I, I want to yeah. be remembered as someone who, you know, they talk about, oh man, that guy was so great. Like he was such a good person. They don't even talk about baseball. Yeah. You know, they, oh dude, he was so welcoming. Like one of my best friends and mm-hmm. well, whatever it is, like just to have people who, when they think of you, just think good things is a good feeling. And it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't take much to make someone's day. You know what I mean? And yeah. And I think we have great influences in our lives as far as like our, our dads and our parents and stuff like that who have really set the foundation for us to be good people and to mm-hmm. uh, just, you know, apply ourselves and and make those decisions every single day that help someone else. Yeah. And I think I think that's a beautiful thing. And um, they set the standard for us. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. They, they, they really set, <laughs> I mean, they set the standard all those for times, sure. all those travel ball games dude, or they're yeah. just getting on us, dude. Yeah. Dude, shout out. Shout out Pops. Elevate our standards. Shout out OG. Dude. Yeah. Like, just shout out Pops. Come bro. on, dude. Like <laughs> they, they really set the standard. And I think it's important for parents to have that. Like, okay. Like you need to get your stuff together or whatever, right. but also like a, like a separate thing. Like you can't always just like beat down on your kid. Like you right, gotta yeah. help elevate them. Yeah. You know and what I mean? So. I think that was one thing like my dad did. That was great. Like, yeah, he tough love got on me. Like when I suck, he told me, mm-hmm. but then I just always took it in a way of like, and I think kids across, you know, I think kids should, should always think about this and, and view their parents this way. And the older I get, the more I understand and realize this is like, Hey, uh, you know, your parents are, are living life for the first time as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're going through the same things that you're going through and whatever it is, if it's anxiety, just stress or, you know, whatever things that your parents are going through, they do a great job of hiding it yeah. and that you don't know what, like yeah. everyone has their personal battles that they go through day in and day out. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think that if you have a little bit of grace for your parents and you could be graceful that you'll, understand and you'll see them in a different light and be way more appreciative of the things yeah. that they do for you that in the moment when you're like a teenager and you're kind of you know got an ego an ego and you're kind of like you know a brat yeah that you don't see but then you get a little older and you're like dang dude like i really do appreciate yeah. who i have in my life and my parents and stuff but um yeah like I got a million stories of my dad oh, just yeah. like, I think, you know yeah. what I mean? We yeah. can go, we can yeah. go down that <laughs> rabbit hole and be yeah. here all night and just yeah. talk about that. But I definitely think that, you know, they set the foundation for us and, uh, allowed us to grow into our own and, and be the young men that we are today. And, you know, one day we're going to be fathers and pass on the same knowledge and, and just experiences that we've gone through. And hopefully our kids understand and comprehend and, and live their life based on the values and stuff that we teach our children and, yeah. and, and stuff. But, um, no, I, I think it's, I think it's dope. I think that, uh, it's definitely like the way my career has panned out so far has been, um, something that like, you know, they say you never want to like live through your children. Right. But it's been like me and my dad's thing, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and I don't feel like I'm playing for him, but it's something we enjoy yeah. together that we've always enjoyed together. Yeah. So, you know, and it, it makes going out there mean more. It makes going out there. I'm not just playing for myself. You know, I'm playing for my family. And, like, yeah. you know, there's people out there who love to watch me play, not because I'm good or, beca- you know, what, but because, like, my dad genuinely finds joy in, like, watching me take the field. Yeah. You know what I mean? I look back to just times at SC and in high school and stuff where, you know, he was at every single game. My parents were at every single game. And, you know, I mean – I'm in college and the guy's bringing me gum to games and so <laughs> dropping it off right before first hey, pitch. <laughs> yeah, don't don't chew hubba bubba. You're, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna end up with oh two root canals. Gosh. How much gum did I chew, dude? Oh, dude, you. Too I much. mean, you still yeah. chew gum. I know, bro. I still you do just, chew gum. I'm surprised you don't have one in right now. Sugar free now. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I learned the lesson. Sugar free now. Lesson, but yeah, I, I look back at you know the guys that he the guys at BP. Like, what are you doing at VP, yeah, dude? Go like, go home. Game doesn't start for another four hours, bro. Yeah. What are you doing here? That's funny, but dude. But it's it's dope. And it just puts it in perspective, though. Like, um, I remember like just talking about 
stories about like leisure times over mm-hmm. like we'd be taking ground balls at foothill and the what <laughs> like the dew is just so bad balls oh yeah skipping dude dirt is just all over the place and then four years later i'm at the university of kentucky playing right. on a beautiful field yeah in front of tens of thousands of fans and it's like damn like i did all that yeah. work like and now i've i get to like enjoy and i'm sure my dad got to really like when he could, saw me at the college world series like that Dude. was one of the first times i really saw my dad like tear up yeah it's unreal and i i mean i cried and I, it was my last game yeah and it was it came full circle and like i still have like guys that i played travel ball with and their parents like i'll randomly see and they're like dude like we watched every game yeah and i'm like really like that's awesome like (laughs) i had no idea and like these you know these families that knew what i put into baseball they finally got to see it come to fruition and it was kind of like cool to see like all the hard work paid off yeah that's pretty dope and so i think like i'm sure you've had that moment i mean stepping onto a minor league field like that must have been like very fulfilling for you as well and for your dad and your mom um so I think it's like you put in the hard work, dude, and like you may not see it the next year or the right. next year. Right. But one day it's gonna it's like gonna pay off. Yeah. yeah. And you're gonna look back and be like, Yeah, yeah. I deserve this. You know yeah. what I mean? No, one hundred percent. I I think like one of those moments that stands out for me, uh, is probably like draft day. Just like yeah. hearing like it it meant more to my parents than it did for me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah hearing my name and then like the picture come up on the TV and and everything That's like awesome. it like being able to share that moment with my parents just and, and like like just being grateful that I, I couldn't have gone there on my own you know what I mean like I look back at all the times of since I was probably in elementary school of like my dad throwing me BP my dad him taking ground balls with me like hitting me ground balls and being my running coach, my lifting coach, my hitting yeah. coach, my pitching coach, my infield coach, mm-hmm. and all of it, you know what I mean? And to this day, like, it, it's hard because I want to say I know more than him about the game. But, like, the guy's been watching me swing the bat my whole life. Yeah. Taught me how to swing the bat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, when he's like, hey, I think your hands are a little too high. I'm like, <laughs> like get out of here. <laughs> but then I drop him, like, wait. Hey, all right. He might be on <laughs> What'd you say again? Yeah. <laughs> that was Drop funny. my hand to do what? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that kind of works. Yeah. That worked. Yeah. So yeah, I've only been seeing you swing the bat for 20 years. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think I know your swing more than you know your swing. Yeah. But, facts. Um, no, that part's super fulfilling to see them find uh, some sort of like enjoyment and enjoying to watching me take the field. And, you know, obviously like playing in New York right now. They're not at every single game. They might get out for a week or two throughout the season. But, um, you know, they watch every single game on live stream. And uh, it, it's cool to finish a game and get up in the clubhouse and get a text from my parents like, you know, I love you. We're proud of you. Yeah. Um, on a, If I go 0 for 4 with four punch outs, I'm getting the same text. Yeah. And I would be getting if I hit four homers in a game. You know what I yeah. mean? So that part's super, super nice to just feel the love and – and, and those types of things, but um, I think that that comes from just the the foundation. You know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. a lot of the days spent early on, just going through the suck, bro. That's what it is. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be. Yeah. Still, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, I've had some unfortunate things happen, and you know, just haven't put together a full season yet, and haven't put together the type of year I know I can have, which is. A blessing you know what i mean yeah for me it's like okay i i, I want all the doubters i yeah. want i love the adverse i want yeah. all of it because i'm gonna go in and do what i've done for the last eight years yeah. 10 years is prove people wrong yeah I'm you undersi- gotta have that chip on your shoulder Dude, I, I, i'm undersized <clears throat> i don't necessarily do anything exceptionally like well better than than others you know like i just yeah. Like you said being a ball player, like being a junkyard dog, like I feel like I do everything good. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's fine. Like it's not sexy. It doesn't stand out. Like, yeah. It's not like, oh, he's got light tower power. He's got, you know, he he's extremely fast or I just do everything good. good. Yeah. But I love that. You know yeah. I mean? I, I want to be a ball player. I don't want to be. Oh yeah, he's got a little bit of thump, but yeah, <laughs> a little bit of thump. Dude. He's got a little bit of thump, but it it only comes out here and there. Like I want to do everything good. I want to do yeah. whatever I'm I'm doing. I want to like, you know, be good at it. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
I love that, you know, I've, I've been put in a position where, wow, you know, I finally hear my name called and the dream comes true. Boom. Adversity. Yeah. Why not? You know what I mean? What, why change now? It's always been that way. Well, what's the difference now? Like, okay, I got drafted. Now I need to, everything needs to go right for me. No, I I want, I want the adversity. I want people to not believe in me. It's just going to make that sweeter when the people in my corner who have always believed in me, they get to say, I told you so, you know what I mean? And my dad, my dad tells me this all the time. He's like, dude, like you're, you're, you're going to break out. You're going to have a really good year. You're going to do a lot of things. And, you know, I'm excited for that for myself. And, you know, you hear something, you hear it enough, you start to believe it. Yeah. And I think that's where he's always put that in my mind of like believing in myself because I hear it from every single day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, I'm, I'm at home and I'm seeing him. So I'm not getting those texts, but when we're, when I'm away f- from them for the season and stuff, like I'll get a text from him every morning, like, good morning. You know, I love you. Uh, you're a star. Like yeah. believe, it. and it's like, okay, I'm, just, <laughs> all right, I'm starting to. Believe, I'm starting to. I get them every single day. I'm like, shit, maybe I am. Maybe <laughs> I am a star, dude. It, no, but it's like, dude, that positive self talk that's coming from someone, someone yeah. else is like, has just built confidence in me, because I'm hearing it from someone who I care about and in love. Yeah. So, dads out there, you got kids, don't ruin the game on a drive home. Yeah. Which is hard. Dude. Yeah. I mean, we've been, you know how many times I quit? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You know how many times, you know, I don't want to play. I'm, I'm going with mom. I don't want to play. Done. Today. <laughs> dude, That's those, funny. I mean, like looking at Austin Schultz videos. Oh dude, yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Those are, his are spot on, bro. Like, I mean, the amount of times we probably both experienced, like dude. forgetting the cleats, oh, dude. Man. Oh, good You're Lord. Kidding me. <laughs> Bringing the wrong Jersey to yeah. like a, a, like a, a new, team that you're playing for oh, man, yeah <laughs> wrong pants dude. spilled like, the breakfast on the uni dude yeah. the fresh white oh, uni no dude you're yeah. the only guy out there with avocado stain <laughs> yeah oh my god <laughs> and you're still gonna be a ball player dude yeah doesn't you got matter. the mickey d stain it's like, on that you, doesn't bro. matter i have mickey d stain i'm still gonna hit i'm gonna be a ball player dude. yeah um i think i think looking back like travel ball uh playing at bld dude, dude i love BLD. i mean you just you get done and the first thing you want to do is go play on the on the turf <laughs> soccer field with your squad yeah. then you find another team you're like oh i think we match up with them in the semifinal game yeah. you're playing wiffle ball against yeah. the team you're about to play. <laughs> you got guys taking oh, guys man. out on slides yeah, and stuff like, oh dude. shoot my bad dog. yeah bro <laughs> it just it, it gets competitive out there oh, it does, but those dude. are the times you look back on and you're just like so appreciative of them and yeah. you know those you don't realize you're in the good days until we're sitting on a couch talking about literally 12 you literally <laughs> 12 yeah. you just want to play ball turn <laughs> literally dude but i know a story sick. that uh my dad i'll never forget this and like parents still tell my dad about this story i just got a fresh new pair of cleats and we go to tustin western little league down the street and we're taking ground balls and i was not doing well no and so he told me to take the cleats off leave them in the car and I had to walk home. Oh, man. So I, w- I didn't walk home, dude. I ran home <laughs> barefooted. So embarrassed. I'm 12 years old, dude. I'm running home on Hughes. And, like, that's a pretty big, like, traffic-y um, road. Mm-hmm. And parents are texting my dad, like, yeah, um, we see Nick running barefooted on Hughes. Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> dude, they'll still tell my dad about that story. And, like, it just made me, like, realize, like, okay, like, when I get something good or nice, like, you know, I got to be appreciative. Like I can't exactly. just like show up and like go through the motions. Like it, th- that's not how it works. Yeah. Like you, you get something good. Like you gotta, like, like you said earlier, you said you gotta just like not take your foot off the gas pedal. Right. And I think I, at 12 years old, I probably took my foot off. Like, oh, I got new cleats, dude. doesn't <laughs> matter what I do today. I got new cleats, but like just knowing like all these good things are going to happen it doesn't mean that it's it's you're 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 there yeah like you haven't arrived no and so um i'll always like remember that story and like whenever i got new cleats at sc or kentucky like dude i was so happy i was like oh dude i'm gonna i gotta go perform like 
even though like that's not what they were expecting like in my head i'm like yeah i just got new stuff i gotta like i didn't make it i i have to go out and do some something yeah. cool you know what i mean before before you uh you have to walk back <laughs> in the snow dude in oh, the snow, man. that's wild but yeah that's just like stuff. i mean we can go on and on about those stories but like that really shaped us i think into who we are as people and what we like you know we don't take things for granted yeah and so it, yeah. i think it's important to realize all those things that are happening in your life like whatever's happening you're in five years you're going to tell stories about it right yeah in 10 years you know what i mean so like you got to just like be able to move on from it and what our coach at kentucky did really well was like everything expires at midnight Mm -hmm. and so when midnight hits it doesn't matter if you were four for four oh for four you lost the game for the team you won the game for the team it's done yeah it's a new day yeah and so i always try to you know take that into my daily life of like, all right, today expired, like whatever. Like I had a bad day at the cage, I had a bad day in business or whatever it is. Right. It's a new day. What what yeah. can I do to get better? Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's amazing. In uh, in high school, we had this like little magnet, little t- like toilet. <laughs> it was a, it was a little bag. <laughs> yeah. And we used to uh, like have to flush it. We'd say flush it. Oh, it's flush it's it, over. Yeah. Flush it, right? Yeah. And I think that was like a huge thing for me in in learning how to deal with failure, right? Like I used to <laughs> I used to get secondhand embarrassment from like the guys that would like get out, start crying or like make yeah. an error and like throw throw something. Like I, I just was never really like on board for those guys. But then like obviously you get older and you start to play with a little bit more emotions and yeah and stuff so i mean I've, I've thrown my fair share of helmets or bats and stuff but um it's it's baseball it's tough you yeah. know i mean you're gonna fail yeah. it's about how you learn how to deal with that failure and i think i had to go through um just the experience of failing to know like probably not a good idea to throw your helmet yeah. or, or your bat yeah <laughs> <laughs> or or you make an error it's probably not the best thing to just be the guy and head moping, down moping yeah. around. no one wants to be around that guy yeah you know what i mean yeah. no one wants to be around the guy that's sad yeah because at the end of the day like i i forget where i heard this but i think i was at practice or, or something and uh someone was having a bad day and like the coach came up and he's like dude like i don't care the guy next to you doesn't care like Dude, just be better. No one like no, yeah. no one cares that you suck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but it sounds funny, but it's yeah. true. It's no, like it is. It's like I oh agree. man, you're having a bad day. No one cares. Yeah, but it sounds harsh, but it's the truth. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think the more you adapt that like idea of like I don't know you you especially in the game of baseball, like you you're so hard on yourself and you overanalyze yourself. The reality, the guy next to you probably doesn't know that you just struck out. Yeah. Like, you know He's what I mean? Worried about his He's worried about yeah. his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it shouldn't be that way, but yeah. it is. And yeah. like, I, I just like look back and so many times I'm like worried about what others are thinking about my game when the guy doesn't even know that I struck out. Like, cause if he asked me what he did his last three at bat, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Unless he hit a homer or something. Yeah. <laughs> game time homer. Yeah. But yeah. like for the most part, like I don't, I don't like, I don't know what you hit like in college or soft. Like I have no idea. Yeah. Like I, I can tell you how many times you struck out or how many air like I can't even tell Not you how that many. many. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, yeah, I agree. Dude. That's funny, but I think that's helped me in pro ball too. Is like, especially when you when you have like some of the coordinators and stuff in town, and you want to play well in front of certain people, but like, you gotta think like, okay, yeah, I just played well in front of them. Is one game gonna make or break my career? And that's what yeah. my dad always, always uh always tells me in and, and that's like a beautiful thing he's like one game doesn't make a series mm-hmm. one series doesn't make a month one month yeah. doesn't make a year one year doesn't make a career you know yeah. what i mean so um just keeping that in my mind is like a huge thing and just staying process oriented to what i believe and like not trying to compare myself to others and just knowing that hey this is my my time this is my timeline my career it looks different from what the next the guy next to me what his looks yeah. like you know he might get fast track to the big leagues and yeah you, it just looks different and i yeah. can't compare myself to him because we're not on the same journey our path isn't the same and you know you can get lost thinking like trying to play gm like oh man I, 
I should be here. I should be there. And, um, just staying where you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be present, be patient. You I know agree, what I mean? dude. Uh, one last story. Um, one of the greatest third basemen I ever played with was Mitch Daly at Kentucky and he was at Texas. And so he I played against st- him, I think, wait, who do, who did he sign with? Uh, Angels. Angel, never mind. Never yeah, mind. he just signed this past year. Okay, I played with another guy. F- or I played against another guy from Tech or from Kentucky. No, from from Texas. Sorry, uh, infielder. Uh, Faltine. No. Uh, Murphy. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know his first name, but I know who you're talking about. Murphy. Pretty good in inf- yeah, third yeah. baseman. Pretty yeah, he infielder. played with him too. Oh, he did. Gotcha. Yeah, so he came to Kentucky as I mean he was a shortstop, and our shortstop. Is the best shorts I've ever seen. Grant Smith. Disgusting. I'll Disgusting. Go. Shout out Grant Smith. I'll Shout leave. out Mitch. Whatever. <laughs> no, dude. He was nasty, bro. Like he never he just was like that guy. Like he was he wasn't like a flashy dude. He just mm-hmm. made every play and it made it look easy. And he would make crazy plays too. But Mitch going into the season, he wasn't hitting that great. And I was hitting really well. And so the idea was to put me at third base, which was <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I was shocked when I knew I was starting at third base. Yeah, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've seen the kid pick yeah. it and throw it across. Yeah. <laughs> so, dude, I'm I'm starting at third base, and like, you know, when you're going through in and out, like he's literally like helping me. I have no idea like what to do. I'm like, dude, Mitchell, <laughs> and he's like helping me out. He's a super cool, dude, and like he had every right to be just like pissed off. Yeah, you know what I mean. But he was literally like take me under his wing like I, I mean i'm not that the greatest at third base and he's showing me the ropes or whatever and so we have our first home game against moorhead state and i make three errors three errors bro and third base and it's not even the third inning yet I made three errors and i'm just like oh my god <laughs> i'm just i'm so domed up dude i'm like oh my gosh like i don't belong here like i'm looking like somebody take me out and so finally like you know, coach takes me out and Mitch comes up to me and he's just like, dude, like, you know, like flush a dog. Like you, you, you're better than that, whatever. And I had pitchers tell me like, I was just domed up. And I'm like, this was like one of the first times where I was just like, Mitch, like, this is your position though. Like you got like, this is you, you belong here. Like yeah. I literally was like, you're the guy, if there's anybody I want to like come to third base, it's you. Right. And so, um, he took over third base and that's what I knew I was a DH. <laughs> and so dude, he's a guy that like, he will make an error and you could walk into the stadium. You have no idea. Right. He just like, he's like, he'll pick up the ball and he'll throw it to the pitcher. He's like, Hey, I got you on the next one. Let's right, go. Yeah. And so he never let anything like get to him. Right. And so I, I even watched him play at, in, with the angels in Sa- uh, San Manuel stadium. Same thing. Like that's just who he is. And so, like, I think that's such, like, he carries himself at a high standard and, like, he elevates people around him because, like, it doesn't matter if he makes an error. Right, yeah. Because you know, like, he's going to make the next play. The next one, yeah. And so, I think that speaks, like, so loudly, like, in just, like, in in general of, like, no matter what happens, like, nobody cares because they you're there for a reason. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. And so, he carried himself every single day the same way and he helped, he honestly like we wouldn't have been in the college world series if i was at third base (laughs) and so like just like the way he carried himself after like errors and he didn't make that many of them but when he did it was like he's gonna make the next one right yeah that's sweet and so i think like i think a lot of younger infielders need to realize like it doesn't matter dude let's get the next one you know carry yourself at a high center you're there for a reason you're playing in the infield right now because you belong there you know what i mean so I think a lot of um, – there was a kid on my dad's team that um, he made a couple errors and he was dragging his feet around. And I go up to him, I'm like, dude, like, you can't let that carry into your at-bat. Right. And he would have a bad at-bat. And I right. had a long talk with him, and I'm like, dude, like, honestly, nobody cares. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. At the time, Aaron Judge was struggling. And I'm like, you think anybody doesn't believe in Aaron Judge right now? Right, yeah. Like, he's literally the AL MVP. Like, I mean, and there's the writers or the people who want to write about him and talk about him. But the people in his clubhouse, dude, that's Aaron Judge. Yeah. They know he's that yeah. he's that guy. He's yeah. their dude. You yeah. know what I mean? They're, no matter what he's going through, they're supporting yeah. him 100%. Yeah. It so, doesn't matter what he's doing. Like, they still believe in him. He's still hitting third. Right. It's it, not like they're putting him nine hole or whatever. Right. Like It looks different outside looking in, especially if you – 
haven't been in a clubhouse or a part of a, a team. Like it's easy to, you know, you've you've watched baseball for one week when the World Series comes yeah. on, but you know, when you <coughs> and when you're in it and you know and you know what it's like to be around that environment, you you probably understand that every single guy in that clubhouse and and within the front office and the coaching staff and just throughout that whole organization is probably like in his ear tell him bro you're our guy yeah. you know what i mean no matter what like exactly you're you're our guy yeah and you know and there's probably some added pressure because he wants to be that guy for him he wants to come through in the clutch moments and wants to be able to perform but it doesn't always happen that way yeah. and um but you know he he knows it <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. like, he knows he's that guy and he knows that you know uh, especially on that that team like when when he goes they go yeah you know what i mean so exactly it, it's not like one of those things it probably you know i can guarantee you there's a million articles probably ripping him but yeah he's their guy yeah you know what i mean and he knows he's their guy yeah so he's a captain yeah you know, the, the new york yankees and that's they don't just it speaks in itself yeah right so there. that's when, what i was trying to tell him like i was like dude it's sun it's a sunday ccyp <laughs> game <laughs> And I'm like, dude, honestly, like, I I believe in you, dude. Like, yeah. you're in there for a reason. He right. was, he's literally the best player on the team. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like, you are the best player on this team. I believe in you. Your teammates believe in you. I don't even care that you just made that error. Like, get ready for the next it's one. It's going to find you. Yeah. The next one will exactly. we'll find you, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's cool. That's, like, having that belief in someone believing you is, is awesome and – um, I don't know, just like, just from the different things I've been able to experience in, in play, uh, like the, like the fall league last year, dude, I got to see so many just great ball players and see how they went about their work and went mm -hmm. about their, their days and like their work ethic and how I was like able to kind of gravitate towards someone and, and pick their mind and, and see like what I can add to my routine to, <clears throat> to be as like efficient as possible and yeah. with my work. So like going to the fall league and just seeing a bunch of those like great players was, you know, uh, an experience in itself. And like one of those things where if you have the chance to go play in it, I would definitely, you know, Absolutely. go, go do it. The fall league's an amazing event. And, you know, I think I want to say it's around like six weeks, maybe dude, it's a blast. You know, like there's yeah. guys on that team who you would have n never met who are like, some of my dogs and um i think it's interesting that team i played on last year there were like three or four guys who i played on the same area code team with and it's yeah. like wow how full circle is yeah. this bro like we were juniors going into our senior year playing area code together yeah and then now we're like playing in the fall league four years later that's like, awesome and pro ball playing in the fall league in arizona together so like yeah. that was cool then you see the guys who you played with and against in the fall league throughout the season and you like know them now and you're able to just connect and network yeah more and like i don't know i i really enjoyed my time in the fall league and uh just you know that was that was probably one of the best times i've had playing baseball at like a high level like dude yeah. you're playing against guys who are like ultimately probably going to be all stars in the big leagues in front of 45 fans yeah literally. <laughs> you're getting 102 blown by you yeah you look up dude there's 40 people there yeah. 20 of them are scouts yeah. <laughs> dude That's but hilarious. i mean it's fun though it's yeah a lot of fun and um i think like that time and i played going into freshman year i played summer ball for the um inland valley pirates Oh yeah, I played for dude, them too. Charlie Reynoso, my guy. <laughs> yeah, dude, that that was such a a great time. Like, when it seemed like the world was shut down and baseball shut down. Yeah. And, you know, I got to meet Chandler. I got to meet Tyrese Carson, uh, Carson Lambert. Yeah, uh, I got to play with those guys before going to SC and like that's sick. a bunch of dudes, just SoCal guys who were really really good. I got to play with. I think my brother was on your team. Bro. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think he was. Yeah. Yeah, because I was on the the Pirates too, but I was on the B squad. I think <laughs> we'd yeah, play after B squad. you Because <laughs> he told me he's like, dude, I was playing with some SC guys, and I'm like, oh, there's another team. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot, what team am I on? 
That's funny, That's dude. The Buster, but, dude. Yeah, the Buster <laughs> Squad, dude. I, I didn't even know there were two teams. I, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah. I just remember that, like, the Bucks and then uh, the Foresters. Yeah. That was a good team. Um, Some, like, Long Riptide, Beach team. Right? Was that the same? Uh, OC? Rip- yeah. No, nah, they weren't in that. They oh, weren't no. in this league I was in. Oh. We we honestly just played against the Bucks like, every week. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we played against them 28 times. <laughs> But uh, this guy again. Yeah, no, but like, there's guys who were on the Bucks who I played with on the, f- on on that fall league team, and I'm like, yeah, yo, like, do you remember we used to play against each other all the time in 2020? You know, it's yeah. 23, and we're playing on the same fall league team. Yeah, like, like that's that's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. There, that's there's awesome. a lot of a lot of cool things going on. Yeah. But all right, I think we're like uh, two out, two and a half hours. Two and in. a half hours in. How many people we got on here? Three. We got, we got four. Three. All right. Uh, for you four homies on there, do you have any questions for DeAndre? Seems like there's a. Is there a question? How's. He said. <laughs> uh, oh, three people. How's the golf game? Brutal. Brutal. Terrible. <laughs> we got three homies on there. All right. Anybody got any questions for DeAndre before we're, we're toast? I go through at least three sleeves every time I golf. Three sleeves? Probably. Dang, dude. Nobody's got questions? Come on. Question. Question. Uh, I think uh, it's yeah, probably time to rack it, huh? I think it's time to rack it, dude. It's, I, oh, wait. We got something. <laughs> we got something? Oh, nice to see you, bro. It's Dana. He said, nice to see you both. How you doing, oh, Dana? Dana? Thanks for man. watching, dude. You're the man. Thanks for keeping up for all these years. Um, it's been awesome to see you guys, or see you. Momo? Oh, he goes CEO. <laughs> <laughs> dude, Momo, you should be here right now, dude. All right. Should we should we talk about leisure before we yeah, sign yeah. off? Yeah. So Get us going. Yeah, dude. So, um, you know, when I started this, I started off with podcasts and vlogs and whatnot and what i wanted to be is way bigger than that but i think being able to tell um guys stories you know i've told my story and now you guys get to hear deandre's story and a bunch of other guys that i've interviewed before like everybody's story is unique and i think it's very um cool to see how like we ended up doing a podcast together just because, you know, a coach put us in a position to, you know, meet and whatnot. And, uh, where we want to take this is so much more than just podcasts, but, um, you know, we, I want to elevate people's standards of the game of life and, you know, having Deandre on board now, it's like, it makes things so much more easier because he's got the same vision as me. And so we're going to continue, uh, applying it to our daily lives and sharing it with you guys daily. Um, but you know, what we have in store is pretty cool and pretty unique. And I hope you guys can really understand what we're trying to build here and, um, you know, willing to be a part of it and whatnot. But, um, yeah. What do you think? That's amazing. You, you, you hit the uh, nail on the head. Yeah. So that's, uh, Big league, dude. Let's yeah, <laughs> big league. But yeah, we've been here for two and a half hours. So, uh, thank you, Leisure House. It was awesome for you guys to be a part of this again. And you know, we're gonna continue doing more podcasts. And our next one is gonna be with Caden Hobson, who is with the LA Angels right now. So that would be a very cool uh, podcast to do at Angel Stadium. So if you guys, uh, I think we're gonna live stream that one. So. It will be at Angel Stadium. DeAndre is going to be my co-host from here on out. So that'll be cool to get a different perspective on things and questions and whatnot. But um, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Later.